Hello, gamers. You're listening to the Short Pause Gaming Podcast. This is episode number 161. And welcome back to another edition of the Short Pause Gaming Podcast. I'm Brent Felsing, and joining me tonight, Bender Holt, Ben Boyce, Frankie Ayler. Guys, it is our E3 preview show. We will talk about all the news that's been building up prior to E3, as well as share our E3 predictions at the end of the show. But it's good to see you guys back. How you guys doing this week? Pretty good. Frankie, you look like shit. What's going on with you, buddy? Yeah, that's a good word. <laughs> yeah. I, uh... <laughs> Got a got a got a cold thing going on, so I'm coughing up all this crap, and it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, I'm. I feel like I'm coming out with something because first we had 80 <laughs> degree weather for two straight days, and then today it was 52. Yay mm. us! Love it here in Michigan. <laughs> Mother Nature can never make up her mind, and that's just wonderful for the sciences. It does wonders. Yeah, I hear you. It's it's been like down here too. It's been high 80s, low 90s all week, and then you know we were like low 60s this morning. That was nice. They only get up to 52 up there today? Really? Well, that's what it was like at 8 o'clock this morning. Like, I think oh, it got yeah. up to like 62 or something like that. But it was oh, okay. It was really cold this morning. It sucked. So, uh, Boys, what's going on with you, man? Uh, nothing, dude. Just uh, grinding through another week. It's been, a, been a busy day today. So I finally just got home just a scant few hours ago. So uh, I'm ready to, to kind of kick my feet back and, and talk some games with you guys finally. Yes, we have a lot to talk about. Mr. Holt, down at the end there, how you doing, buddy? Doing pretty well. I've been, you know, trying to stay busy myself, working a lot. and uh, But yeah, I'm, I'm excited to uh, go into our E3 predictions, and it's going to be a good time. Yeah, I'm going to seriously win this year. Like, I'm seriously done not scoring a single point. I am winning this year, guaranteed. I have some very <laughs> bold predictions. I can't wait to share them with you guys. Uh, <laughs> shut up, Frankie. Uh, there, one thing we want to mention real quick, um, if you do enjoy this podcast, please give it a like, a thumbs up. Uh, you could also subscribe if you feel like you want to always catch our content. If you do subscribe, I also recommend hitting that little bell next to it just so you're always getting notifications of our new content every time it goes up. Uh, it, it's it's very convenient and, and we, we really appreciate it. You know, we don't you don't have to subscribe, but we always do appreciate when you do it and, and, and you support the content that we kick out every week. These guys work hard and uh, we love making videos for you guys and girls. And that's something that we're going to focus on going forward here. We got a lot of stuff planned, a lot of ideas. So uh, make sure you're subscribed to the channel like the videos if you like it if you don't like them that's cool make sure you sign off in the comments or hit us up in an email podcast at shortpause.com let us know what you think also head over to our youtube channel also twitch or on mixer uh tower talk episode number seven is available now we talked about the upcoming changes uh to the upcoming faction rally some big changes coming to that we also talked about next week's uh year two reveal big stuff next week for destiny 2 gonna be a very busy week so check out tower talk episode number seven it's available right now gentlemen let's get into these new releases franklin we're gonna start off with the games of gold and playstation plus lineups Oh yeah, so uh, let's hop in with the, uh, to the games with gold lineup first. Uh, for the Xbox One this month, we'll be getting Assassin's Creed Chronicles Russia. For, that's from June 1st to the 30th. And uh, Smite, the gold bundle. Smite's a free-to-play game, mind you, but this, this bundle's not worth $100, okay? But that'll be available <laughs> from June 16th to July 15th. Uh, as far as our 360 games, which of course are also backwards compatible, there's Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed. That'll be available from June 1st to the 15th. And uh, Lego Indiana Jones 2, The Adventure Continues. That'll be June 16th until the 30th. Mm. Uh, quick round the horn here. Um, ben, what do you think of this lineup? Um, I mean, it's, it's not the greatest games with gold lineup. We, we've seen better lineups in, in recent months. Uh, while I haven't played Assassin's Creed Chronicles Russia, I know that game wasn't terribly well received. Uh, not too many fans out there that one. Obviously, you mentioned Smite is a free-to-play game. Um and you know there's a lot of people that are probably already playing that game it's being able to get the gold bundle i don't know what's in the bundle what do you what do you get skins and stuff or what's yeah what's, i think skins yeah you have all the heroes unlocked because i think they rotate the okay. free ones yeah yeah so i mean i guess if you're a, if you're a fan of smite that's cool you'd be able to get all the all the characters unlocked for you but uh but yeah just 
it's it's probably a game that a lot of people are already playing if they're interested in playing it. Uh, you know, Sonic and, and Lego Indiana Jones, like those are both good games. Uh, I own both of those, so it's good that those are going to be backwards compatible. But uh, the the Xbox One lineup, not as strong as it has been in recent months. Mm. Brent? Uh, same way. Uh, Assassin's Creed Chronicles Rush, no interest in that. Smite, I've played it, didn't really care for it. Uh, you know, the 360 games, I think those are, you know, I know they've been well received. They're, they're popular. Uh, I just don't really have a whole lot of time to go back and play like PS3 and 360 games. So uh, th- this month is kind of a pass. Yeah, Bender? I think it's it's an all right uh, lineup. Um, I've never played Smite, but it's like a MOBA, right? Or mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm not sure if I'd be interested in that. I might play that Sonic racing game, though. I, I like kart racing games, so something I might check out. I've never played that. And the Lego games are always fun. I've never played the Indiana Jones one, so I might check that out too. So I think it's uh, it, like the guys have said, it, we've seen better lineups, but it's it's not too bad. Yeah, I mean, for me, I um, I still haven't played any of the asset, well, outside of streaming China for a little bit, but I haven't really played the uh, Chronicles games. So mm-hmm. Russia looks pretty cool. I'm kind of curious about it. So I'll, maybe I'll fire it up. Maybe not. Who knows? No interest in Spite. I just. So it's been out for a couple of years now. The people who wanted this bundle bought this thing years ago when this right. came out. So I don't even understand why this is in here. That's ridiculous to me. I don't know. But uh, as far as the three, uh, 360 games go, like Sonic and uh, Sonic All Stars Racing Transformed is excellent. I uh, play a lot of that game with a couple friends of mine. Uh, you know, last gen, so it'll be cool having that again. And uh, like Bender said, the Lego games are always good. So Indiana Jones 2 is a good one as well. So be uh, be cool to have that. All right, um, so let's move on to the PlayStation Plus lineup. Uh, this one uh, seems to uh, fare a little bit better with us here. Um, for PlayStation 4 titles, we're getting Trials Fusion and XCOM 2. For the PlayStation 3, we'll be getting Ghost Recon Future Soldier and Zombie Driver HD. And then for the Vita, we'll be getting Squares and Atomic Ninjas. No cross by titles this month. Um, mm-hmm. So again, quick round the horn. Bender, what do you think of this lineup? Um, I've never played any of these, so I'll... Definitely be interested in seeing what they're all about. Um, I know XCOM is like a, a real-time strategy type of game, so I've heard that's pretty good, so I might want to check that out. Um, but, yeah, I'll, I'm, I'm not too familiar with any of these, though. Gotcha. I think you'll dig uh, Trials. It's more of a, it's, yes. it's a motorbike game, but it's kind of puzzly, so I think you'll Ooh. enjoy that one. Okay, cool. Nah. Brent? Uh, yeah, I think this is a, de- a pretty strong lineup. But I think Trials Fusion is really, really fun. It's very challenging. It's very difficult to get like the best times you can, uh, but it is really, really fun. Has a bitchin' soundtrack. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of strengths with Trials Fusion. XCOM Two is is a fantastic addition. This game is awesome. XCOM Two is a very, very, very good game. Uh, Ghost Recon Future Soldier. I really like that game. I doubt anyone will actually play this game though. Uh, it died like three months after launch. Uh, unfortunately, uh, and so I mean, but it's a, it, the, the strength about it is if people do get it, the cooperative elements are fun. Uh, you can play through the campaign cooperatively, cooperatively, so there is some value there. I thought the co- co-op was implemented perfectly in that game; it was really, really fun. Uh, don't know anything about Zombie Driver, the Vita games. I don't know anything about, but XCOM Two and Trials Fusion are are, are really good additions here. Boys, yeah, it's a, a very, very strong lineup. Um, the, like the guys mentioned. I love the Trials games. Um, Trials are are a ton of fun, so getting Trials Fusion is awesome. XCOM 2, this is a big budget, uh, real-time strategy game that that a lot of people really enjoy. I haven't uh, really played it yet, so um, that's cool that we're getting that one as well. But uh, we got two like big time games from the PS4 side of things. Getting Ghost Recon is awesome. I'm interested in in Squares and Atomic Ninjas on the on the Vita as well. But uh, yeah, I, I think this is a, a very very strong lineup for June for PS Plus. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, I remember picking up Trials Fusion back you know when it came out just out of curiosity because I'd always heard those games are really cool, mm-hmm. and uh, I really enjoyed what I played of it, but I just didn't really have the time to dedicate to it at the time. So it'd be cool to uh, actually get this because I think I sold my copy, but whatever <laughs> um <laughs> xcom 2 you know like brent said i I'd, I'd need to spend more time with it you know this one kind of added a lot of things um you know like timers and xcom is notoriously difficult so mm-hmm. i think you know as my appreciation for you know strategy games has kind of uh, risen over the years i might you know might fare better this time around but yeah dude ghost recon kind of future soldier is awesome mm-hmm. so if you haven't played that game you still have a ps3 check that thing out or if you have an xbox one pick it up on backwards compatibility it's an awesome game 
Mm-hmm. All right. So real quickly, we're going to go through the spotlight releases. we got a lot to talk about this week. So uh, I want to start off with a game that actually came out last week. You know, um, we didn't have a show. Uh, so that is West of Loathing. This is available now on the Nintendo Switch. Um, if you guys pay attention to those uh, Nintendo Directs, this one was featured on the last one, I believe. Uh, it's kind of like this stick figure, um, you know, kind of goofy Western RPG. <laughs> so it's just a lot of goofy animations and a uh, very uh, goofy story. So if you're uh, looking for something, you know, kind of light on humor, it's, uh, you know, like I mentioned, RPG has a turn-based battle system in it. Um, really cool looking game. Um, Limited Run will be doing a physical version in August. So if you want to hold off for that, go ahead and do so. Um, all their Switch games are doing open pre-orders. So uh, if you want a physical version of this, August 3rd, limitedrungames.com is where you're going to want to go. Um, up next, uh, Vampire. This game will be available on Tuesday. Uh, this is coming to PS4 and Xbox One. This one coming from the Life is Strange developers at Don't Nod. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, uh, you'll step into the shoes of Jonathan Reed. Um, you're a newly uh, newly formed vampire, so you're basically investigating, um, you know, all these uh, th- this outbreak of, of a virus and, uh, you know, all these people turning into, you know, various creatures. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of cool things about that game. Looks very promising. I am actually uh, working my way through a review copy, so I will have a review up sometime next week. Very beefy game, so uh, look forward to that over on the website. Uh, up next, Onrush. This game will be, again, available on Tuesday on PS4 and Xbox One. This coming from a lot of the X um, uh, Evolution, Evolution Studios guys. Yes. For, that are now at Codemasters. Uh, this game looks awesome. It's, uh, you know, kind of like um, MotorStorm meets Burnout meets SSX is uh, what they're describing <laughs> it as. Um, so I don't know if you guys got to try out that uh, beta a couple weeks ago, but this game just seems ridiculously awesome. It's all about causing as much carnage as possible. So I'm very interested in this one, hoping it uh, pans out well in the reviews. But again, look for that yeah. one on Tuesday. Yeah, I think this game looks really cool too, man. The What I got from watching the trailer is the sense of speed looks incredible in this game. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, that's always uh paramount in these like arcade style racing games Mm -hmm. so uh yeah it looks like it's it's ultra smooth ultra fast it it looks really really fun yeah for sure i've watched some of the game plus people you know stream the beta and just watching it 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 is that it's filling up your boost meter and and just figuring out ways to wreck your enemies so (laughs) it looks awesome (laughs) um up next elder scrolls online somerset this will uh, be launching on tuesday as well uh, this, of course, you know, the uh, new expansion for uh, Elder Scrolls Online. I know, Brent, you guys got into this game a little bit, so I don't know where you're at with this update. Uh, but you'll basically be getting access to a new area, of course. Big, massive new area. Um, new new loot, new bosses, new characters, new factions, all kinds of fun stuff. Mm-hmm. So if you're an Elder Scrolls fan, look for that one on Tuesday. Um, up next, this game actually has been available on the PS4 for a while now, but it's finally coming to Xbox One. Um, the PlayStation 4 version is going to be getting some performance updates, some much needed performance updates from what I understand. Uh, mm-hmm. But that is Aragami Shadow Edition. Um, so this one b- includes the base game as well as the, um, is it Nightfall DLC? Is that what this one's yes. called? Nightfall? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So the Nightfall DLC, all of the DLC released to date as well as that base game finally coming to Xbox One. And, uh, you know, these, you know, this, I'm pretty sure the expansion will be available on PS4 this week as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but Brent, I know we were uh, talking about featuring this on the Indie Spotlight. I know you've dabbled with this game before. Uh, are you excited to fire this one up and check out the co-op? Absolutely. I mean, this game is is really, really good. It's a fantastic stealth game. There's a lot of ways you, when you rank when you rank your character up, you unlock new abilities. There's a lot of cool stuff here. Uh, the Nightfall uh, expansion is based on like uh, um, uh, anime. So it's got a kind of a cooler looking art style, and it's just a it's a beautiful looking game in motion. I'm glad they're bringing out an update uh, to for performance because uh, my you know from what I've played, it was kind of a little rough around the edges. It wasn't as smooth as I wanted to be, but with this update, it sounds like it'll be at a locked 30, a much smoother 30. If you unlock the V Sync, it'll go from 30 up to up to 60 in some areas. But when they tell me it's going to go from 30 up to 60 in some areas, that's way too much. Uh, yeah. Back and forth, I, it's either a steady sixty for me, or I'm just gonna play with the lock thirty. The game looks beautiful enough where I'm cool with it being thirty frames. Um, you know, and I've seen it on PC when it hits sixty frames. It's it is it is lovely in motion. I mean, it looks great in motion. But you know, if we're gonna play this on the indie spot, it'll be on the PlayStation Four. Ben and I are gonna go through it uh, cooperatively, and uh, we'll be able to check it out then to see how these performance uh, changes, uh, how, how much they improve the game. 
Yeah. Awesome. Looking forward to that. I know JD is real big on this game. He's featured some of the tracks on the soundtrack on his show on the Play and Listen mm-hmm. Gaming podcast. So great music, great looking game. Looking forward to checking out that stream. Yeah, the, uh, the soundtrack's wonderful. The mm-hmm. uh, and and that that was really that was really my only beef with the game. We actually featured uh, Aragami on the spotlight when it first came out. Yep. And uh, that was my only gripe with it was the performance issues with mm-hmm. it. It had some some noticeable frame rate issues that that impacted. I mean, it was, it was noticeable when you were playing the game. So, but yeah, I think this game if it's at a locked thirty, it's a slow plotting like stealth experience. So there, it, this this would perform well if it if it's locked at at thirty as well. I think so. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that. So is the online co-op is that a new addition or was that there from day one? Uh, you know, my understanding is I thought I read that it's been there since day one, but I never I don't remember ever <laughs> seeing the option in there. Yeah. Uh, so I never even thought about using it, but I guess it's been in there since day one. If not, it had to have been added shortly after. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I don't remember <laughs> anyone talking about co-op. In this I don't game, either. So. And I don't remember playing it and seeing anything about co-op, but maybe it's right there in front of me. You guys know how I am when I jump into a game and I don't read something simple. I can miss it and just be like, yeah, it's not in there. And then I look and it says co-op right there. So who knows? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> looking forward to checking out that stream. Now, that'll probably be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. All right. And the uh, last game I want to talk about this week is Sushi Striker The Way of Sushido. This is a Friday release on the Switch and 3DS. Uh, this looks like a game kind of in the vein of um, Battle Chef Brigade that came out earlier yes. this year. No, oh, Bent, that's when you fired up on a stream. The game looks ridiculously dumb and fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's kind of like a it's, a, it's a puzzle game, but you're, um, you know, doing combat with food and trying to create dishes and stuff. So <laughs> it, it looks insane. <laughs> There's actually a demo available now on the eShop. So if you guys want to check it out, uh, go ahead and do so. And if you enjoy it, uh, look for that one on Friday. So Brent, that's going to do it for the new releases that we're going to spotlight this week. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Really, really appreciate it. All right, let's get into the news. There's a lot of stuff coming out before E3, some big reveals that have happened the last uh, this past week and a little bit before that. But uh, first up, the big news of the week. It is official, Franklin. Let's go Pikachu and let's go Eevee are real, and they're coming to the Nintendo Switch on November 16th. Uh, and uh, confirming many of the leaks and rumors that we talked about last week and that you so were so uh, uh, strongly against saying, "Up, oh, this is not happening. Frankie, how's that crow, buddy? I know you were talking about that on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm still kind of surprised, but you know, at the same time, um, I feel like now is maybe the time to revisit those games. I've been, I enjoyed those old Pokemon games, so mm-hmm. if they're going to remake any, I'm glad it's you know the ones that I spent the most time with. I mm-hmm. prefer the EV version because I'm a person of taste, so... <laughs> <laughs> Well, these games will take players all the way back to the Kanto region to collect the original 151 Pokemon, and they'll feel very different than any Pokemon game we've we've ever seen. Uh, this will also have multiplayer. Uh, Nintendo will also be releasing a Pokeball-shaped controller called the Pokeball Plus for Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Players will be able to use the controller to bring one of their Pokemon with them as they explore the real world. <laughs> Uh, Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Evil will also have drop-in, drop-out co-op, a first for the series. Uh, This is uh, from uh, the the director um, Junichi Musada. Musuda? Uh, when you're playing the game, you'll see that there's kind of a mark indicating when a second player can join in. It's pretty much any time you're in the fields or on the routes in the battles, for example. All you do is take a second Joy-Con and shake it, and the second player will drop in, and you'll be playing alongside your friends. Um, this is also what Masuda had to say. Uh, we took inspiration from and, and used the Pokemon Yellow version as the base for these games. Um, those games came after Pokemon Red and Blue, and what they did was take those original games and add a bunch of elements from the animated series like Team Rocket and other characters to better resonate with young kids. We knew we wanted to try out new gameplay ideas with this game and wanted to find a version to add on to where it would make the most sense. With these games specifically, we're trying to introduce these all-new play styles. It's really a much simplified experience compared to the traditional series. At the same time, I think there's going to be a lot of players who enjoyed the original games. So, boys, uh, I know you're a big fan of Pokemon. We saw this reveal. We found out some things. Uh, and I want to get your thoughts on this first, buddy. Yes, I was uh, I was pretty excited to see what they were going to do with Pokemon on the Switch, and um, you know I'm not uh, I'm not terribly excited by this announcement just yet. I mean, some of the things that that we've learned about it, it's it seems like it's going to be 
Um, I mean, obviously it's based on on Pokemon Yellow, so so that's cool that they're going back and I don't, I don't know if this is considered a remake or a remaster or, or what. It sounds like you know you, you kept saying they used Pokemon Yellow as the basis for this. So I don't I don't know if it's going to be the same game or they're like, switching some stuff up or wh- whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, so so that that's cool that they're going back and doing that. But uh, clearly it's it's also influenced by Pokemon Go, which is um something that uh, that I haven't really got into up to this point um no, i was telling you guys before the show the uh the the aspects of pokemon that i that i really like uh sunk my teeth into in the past were the more like hardcore elements of the game that don't seem to be in this version of the game now so um you know things like the the ivs and the evs like the things that you really like dig into the stats of your pokemon and and try and and try and build up your characters uh there doesn't appear that there's gonna be any breeding in this game as well so that was one of the things that i really like to do like try to try to you know create that perfect pokemon which was was something i was obsessed with back <laughs> on pokemon diamond um so some of that stuff's not here you know it's got it's got the uh it's got the motion controls to uh, to capture the pokemon which which may or may not be cool i, I don't know I'll have to see how that how that works exactly but um but yeah it's it seems like this is going to be a, a little bit of a of a lighter pokemon experience which is fine but uh for my money i'm going to be more interested to see what they do with this quote unquote core pokemon experience which which they're looking to do in the future i mean there's a lot of pokemon in the future here, so right. i don't know how many people are working at game freak but they're uh they're just cranking these things out like every single year now it's 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 pretty wild but uh mm-hmm. but yeah i mean it's it, it might be cool it's it's also it's 60 bucks for this game and there's two of them so in order to capture them all i mean i guess you could use pokemon go to, to get the stuff off there as well because it links up with that, but uh, but yeah, spending one hundred twenty dollars on Pokemon to try and uh, to get both versions of the game is 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 pretty steep. Yeah, Bender, how about you, man? Are you gonna drop one hundred twenty bucks to grab both of them? Uh, no, no <laughs> I'm not gonna try to grab both of them. Um, I do think this is a, a really interesting idea. I'm gonna be interested to see how they market this and also how well it does, because like like Boyce was saying, it's not gonna have like the more hardcore. Pokemon game elements that we've seen in in later games, but it's it's like a reimagining of of Pokemon Yellow. They didn't have breeding back then. They didn't have the. I don't think Pokemon even had male and female genders in in that game yet. Um, but uh, the except for like Nid- Nidoran and Nidorino or whatever. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, I think the what the the whole reason they're doing this is I think you know they saw the success of Pokemon Go like I think I heard there was like eight hundred million people who downloaded that worldwide. I think they're trying to take the that that casual audience and tr- and try to get some of them to you know kind of go into the 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 more of a co- more console experience and kind of get them to convert mm-hmm. um it's you know they're they're not going to get all of them the, the, they're probably not even going to get a fraction of them but even if like one percent of those people who downloaded pokemon go buy the switch and get this game that's millions of dollars more that they wouldn't have had otherwise mm-hmm. so i think this is going to be a very good business decision on their part and we'll see how well it pays off for them but um yeah i don't think they're quite aiming this you know directing this towards the hardcore pokemon audience but you know they're they're trying to get some more the pokemon audience to grow i guess Mm -hmm. i i am kind of interested in this though i did we'll see how when, when we learn more about you know how the game mechanics are, the battle system and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I might be more inclined to, to buy it, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see. But um, I, I think it's a very interesting business decision, decision for them, though. Mm-hmm. I see what you're saying there. Frankie, let's come over to you, man. I know you're a fan of Pokemon. What are your thoughts, though, on everything that we saw here, despite the fact that you were adamant that this was not happening? <laughs> um, no, I mean... Despite you know thinking this wasn't going to be a thing, like I said, I'm I'm happy that they're they're going back basically to the one that I started with. Mm-hmm. Um, I I'm not sure. I thought there were some gameplay snippets in there, so it does have like that more um, modern Pokemon layout. It's not like the mm-hmm. classic over the top one, but I thought I read somewhere that like Pokemon wandering around the world will be like life size. <laughs> so like if you see wow. Pokemon, they'll actually just be wandering around in the wild. So. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to be curious to see, like, like Bender said, like what exactly, you know, we're, we have to expect with this one. Um, 
<clears throat> I was I was like trying to figure out how they could do a Pokemon Go thing because I don't think the Switch has a camera on the back of it, so you can't really do the AR thing. So I assume there's this this has to just be like an actual game, right? Like I know that I know the video had like Pokemon Go things in it, but I don't know how that would work on the Switch. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be from what I can tell, it's gonna be an actual game, but the actual capturing the Pokemon mechanic is going to be more like Pokemon Go where you're like throwing the Pokeball at at the Pokemon and to capture it. And from what I've heard, it's there's not going to be like wild Pokemon battles like the previous games. You're going to be able to see the Pokemon on the map like on Pokemon Go. You can, you can approach them and try to capture them. And then the battles are going to come into play when you find an actual trainer along the road and you can battle them the traditional Pokemon way. But from what I understand, the actual catching of the Pokemon is going to be more like Pokemon Go. Yep. So you get Pokeballs through microtransactions? <laughs> I, I hope not. Oh, oh man. No. I don't know. It sounds For dangerous. $60, you better not. <laughs> man, no kidding. And I also, I also hope they, they ditch the candy system that they have in Pokemon Go because uh. that's, that's not going to work <laughs> for a traditional game. But I don't know. No. We'll see. No. Help me again. What's the, what's the candy system again? So when in Pokemon Go, um, the only way to level up a Pokemon or to make them stronger, you have to collect candy. So every time you catch a Pikachu, you every time you catch another Pikachu, you can turn it in to get candy instead, and then you give that candy to the to the Pikachu that you want to make stronger to make it to make it level up. Wow! And it's just a weird yeah. system. It, it it it's not. I don't think it would work for a a traditional like console game. Grind your mm. Pikachu down into Pikachu candy. <laughs> yeah. oh. It's kind of gross when you think about it. Yeah. Hey, yeah, just throw them in the wood chipper and then uh, feed them yeah. off to the other Pikachu. Uh, that's yeah. that's pretty they messed that's up. Dark. Yeah, <laughs> gonna get mad Pikachu disease. Oh, that sounds that sounds terrible. But no, I think Bender's right. I think this thing's gonna sell like crazy. It's it's Pokemon, uh, and and I do think you're I mean, on to something there when you know by them trying to funnel some of those Pokemon Go people over into the Switch to play on a console version. I mean, you can still connect to your Pokemon Go, so they're, they're going to reward you for that. They're, that's that's kind of the appeal as well. So uh, it, it is very interesting, but I'm sure this thing is going to sell like crazy. But as Boyce mentioned, you know, they also put it right out there on their Twitter. You know, with po- and this is what they said. With Pokemon Quest, which we'll talk about in a moment, and Pokemon Let's Go, there are so many new ways to explore the world of Pokemon. Trainers can look forward to even more with an all new core experience or a core, uh, an all new core series Pokemon RPG title in development for the second half of 2019. So, boys, I think that's the game they're targeting you for. They're going to expect you to be, you know, excited for that one, uh, for with the training and the breeding and all that stuff, like a core experience in, in second half 2019. What are your thoughts on that, yeah. though, man? I mean, they've got this. This po- this is a Pokemon game that's coming out this fall. It's going to be a big one, and they're going to have another one next fall. How's that looking for the Switch? Yeah, I mean, uh, it looks good for the Switch. I mean, obviously, it, it, Pokemon's a huge draw. It's going to bring a lot of people in. And just the fact that they called the one in 2019 a core RPG just makes me think even more so that, that this one might be even lighter than maybe even I'm, I'm thinking that it that it will be. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, so I, I definitely want to wanna learn more about it before I decide if I want to if I want to jump in on this one, but, uh, but yeah, the one in 2019 is definitely the one that I'm targeting, uh, in terms of, in terms of what I, what I'm looking for out of, out of my like next Pokemon experience. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, just a lot of, a lot of games come out year after year after year after year from the, from the Pokemon. I don't know how many people, like I was saying, work over at Game Freak, but, uh, mm-hmm. they're literally making two of these things every single year and they're, and they're coming out. So, um, they're just, uh, cranking away and, um, hopefully we, we see some innovation on that front too. You know, we see them kind of taking this formula, taking it to the next level. Like they should be able to do some new things now that they're on a brand new console. I mean, these things are typically made for the 3DS. So moving mm-hmm. up to the Switch, we have a much more powerful piece of hardware. Uh, they, they should be able to do a lot more things with it. So hopefully taking this extra time to work on the the quote-unquote core RPG experience like gives us like that next step, that next evolution, no pun intended, of, uh, mm-hmm. of the Pokemon franchise with mm-hmm. uh with what we're gonna see in 2019 now i was thinking when you when you guys were talking too um and i i wonder you know you guys were mentioning uh people um uh, transitioning from the pokemon go phone game into the into the switch game now i wonder if more so maybe they're maybe they're just trying to capture the people that already own a switch and they're trying to get them to buy 
this game because I, I I feel like it's it's still gonna be a tough sell for like the casual Pokemon fan who has a phone to go out and buy a Switch and then buy Pokemon. I mean, you have to really be like obsessed with Pokemon Go to make that mm-hmm. transition. But everybody who owns a Switch owns a phone, so if they have a phone and they're into into Pokemon on there and they've maybe never tried it before, or if they're a uh, you know if they've always been into it on like the 3ds. I feel like that's the crowd that maybe they're going to be going after here. The people that already own a Switch that are going to go out and then buy that game um, mm-hmm. to uh, to take advantage of of whatever they've played previously. Mm-hmm. Well, you got that's that. The Pokeball works with Pokemon Go too. So even if people don't mm-hmm. have a Switch, they're still going to go out and buy that thing. So oh, yeah. that mm-hmm. thing's fifty bucks. The I mean, ball is N- Nintendo just continues to rake you over the coals with these accessories. <laughs> <laughs> fifty wow. bones for that thing. We should probably pick one up, get that thing listed on eBay. You know how that's going to go. <laughs> but remember, you can use it as a Joy-Con controller, too. So it's not mm-hmm. just throwing. You can control with that little nub to dude, move your character around, boy. That's dude, awesome. That's, that's, I would throw that thing against the wall just because that's what it's for. It's a ball. Like That's yeah. not smart. That's, that's, the, that's the other part of this that makes me think like this is a very, very simplified Pokemon experience. The fact that you can control the game with that ball. I don't. I mean, is there is there even a button on there? Is there maybe one button? There's on there? the 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 stick. The stick is a clickable stick, so that's one button. Then there's a button on the top, so it's a stick and two buttons essentially. Oh, okay, so. okay. Wow, fifty. Which is all you that. needed to play in the original Pokemon games. Yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Valid point. Uh, we also mentioned just a moment ago when uh, from that tweet they mentioned Pokemon Quest, which is a free to start RPG for the Switch, uh, oh, taking those place. Free to start games. <laughs> yeah, free to start, uh, taking place in the new region of Tumble Cube Island. In the game, you'll befriend Pokemon by giving them items or cooking them treats. Battle and customize a base camp with collectibles. The game seems to center on creating a bond with the Pokemon you meet. You'll be able to use special items called Power Stones to personalize their stats. Pokemon. Quest also has a really cute distinctive art style where Pokemon and everything else are rendered as a series of cubes. This is available now on the Nintendo Switch. Did anybody pick this up? I downloaded it, but I haven't tried it yet. Um, mm-hmm. I, I'm going to check it out and see if it's anything that that, uh, that keeps me interested, but uh, you know, I'll play anything for free. <laughs> oh yeah, obviously that's that's cool. Boys, I know you can't even find your Switch. Frankie, any interest <laughs> in, uh, in, in this Pokemon uh, Quest? I don't think so, but listening to the way you describe it, it sounds like that Animal Crossing pocket game. Hmm. Mm, sounds maybe. very similar to that in concept. Hmm. Mm. I'll play it and I'll report back. Mm. <laughs> well, yeah, you got into that. Yes. Oh, I, I still play Pocket Camp every day. See? Do you really? Yeah. Man, it's that good, huh? <laughs> I like it. That's cool. Awesome. Good stuff. But yeah, that was the big news out of uh, out of the Pokemon camp. Lots of big stuff coming out uh, this week uh, regarding Pokemon. And like I said, we we know there's a free to play game. We know there's a title coming out this fall, and then there's another a bigger title coming out next fall. So uh, Pokemon is in a position to uh, really drive them switch sales because there's going to be a lot of Pokemon in our future. Uh, another, I would, uh, I, I oh, sorry, would guess ahead. too that we're going to see some more of this at E3. At least I would hope as part of their presentation. Mm-hmm. They would show us um, a little bit. I don't think we'll see the 2019 game yet. I think they're probably going to focus on the the EV and the Pikachu games. But yeah, hopefully they'll they'll give us some more info in a in a couple weeks here. So Mm -hmm. this is this is like the only November big November release we have. What if everything got out of the way of Pokemon? (laughs) (laughs) Everyone knew Pokemon was coming out. Like oh, that's good. Even Red Dead Redemption Two was like oh, let's get out of here. Yep, that's why they're at the end of October. (laughs) (laughs) I uh. I think it might have some some uh some company with with Smash Brothers in that month. Mm. Nintendo just taking over November. They really are. <laughs> they really are. Um, some other news regarding Nintendo that's that's pretty big is um it looks like Fortnite is coming to uh to the Nintendo Switch. Uh, the, there was a document that leaked out, um, posted on 4chan earlier this week by someone who said it was part of the E3 showroom display planning and discovered by Twitter user Amar Amarmaro. 
I guess I'm assuming A A M R A R. I can't even spell it. Amaria. Features, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't even read. Uh, yeah, that's so <laughs> difficult. No, uh, but this uh, this this leaked information features marketing materials for Fortnite, Paladins, Dragon Ball Fighter Z, FIFA, the previously announced Monster Hunter's Generations Ultimate, and an unannounced an unannounced games Killer Queen Black and Overcooked Two. But we see Fortnite is on this on this list here, boys. <laughs> I, I felt like this was just uh, just something that was going to happen eventually. I mean, if you can get Fortnite onto the Switch, the biggest one, arguably the biggest, yeah, it's on the it's on phones right now. This had Thank to come to Switch. This, yep. Yeah, th- this had to come to Switch, right? I mean, this is going to be a big title on the Switch. Uh, I would uh, I would imagine, and it, I guess it just depends on what um, what form they bring this over in. Like, will this True. be the full battle royale experience? Will this be the PV? the pve stuff like what are they actually bringing over to the switch and you know, this goes back to you know stuff that we've talked about previously it's like once again fortnite's an online game so you know is the is the nintendo online experience going to be there for this game like we're not getting the official launch of this until this upcoming fall here so does fortnite maybe launch with the with the upcoming uh online program and maybe uh flesh out that experience a little bit but it's like this is this is a game that you play online with your friends so I mean, they mm-hmm. they have to they have to figure out a way to make that be a better experience for you, or you can just play Fortnite on one of the other <clears throat> millions of places that you can play it now on your phone, your console, PC, whatever. Um, mm-hmm. So, in order for it to be a, a good Switch experience, they've got to work out some of those internet kinks. I think. Right. That's that's a valid point, Frankie. Any interest in trying out Fortnite on the Switch? Nope. Nope. Maybe if it's the know. core game. Like, I'm interested in playing the core game. The mm-hmm. the tower defense, you know, the storms coming thing like that kind of looks cool, but mm-hmm. I have no interest in the battle royale thing at all. I I feel like I'm the only one that actually plays the PVE portion of the game. Like I actually do think that part's pretty good. Uh, I suck something fierce at the at the battle royale mode, but I do like the elements found in the core game where you are building stuff, building up uh, your base, getting ready for waves of enemies. I do actually find that part pretty appealing. I think it's actually really fun, uh, but it just seems like that the focus is just constantly on battle royale. That's what everyone's playing is yeah. the battle royale version of that game, and it's unfortunate because I can't seem to get anyone else to p- actually pay for the for the PVE portion of the game. Everyone's just doing the free to play uh, battle royale, which I understand it's free to play and it's it's seriously the hot is battle royale game right out there right now well they did say that that core thing would be free at some point so that's probably why that's what i'm waiting for yeah before yeah. battle royale was even a thing like oh yeah this will probably be free next year but you know it's paid early access so yeah that's what i'm waiting yeah. for right uh ben or any interest in fortnite man if it comes to the switch man if i haven't played it by now uh, on the other consoles i'm probably not going to play it on switch either <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, hopefully, you know, you know, Frankie said, hopefully the, the, the PvE portion goes free at some point, because I'd love to play with you guys. I think it, it would be a really fun game to play cooperatively. It's just, uh, yeah, you know, the fact that you have to pay for it right now, and it's just more enticing. The audience is obviously driven by the Battle Royale stuff. Mm-hmm. That's where everyone wants to go, and it's free to play, so that's why everyone's on that side. But, yes, I can confirm the PvE portion is pretty fun. Hopefully it'll go free to play at some point. Uh, we got a couple more Nintendo nuggets to talk about here. First up, uh, the Nintendo 64 Mini. Is it incoming? Is it not, is it on its way? Uh, Nintendo has filed another trademark in Japan, fueling further speculation that a Nintendo 64 console might be on the way. Spotted by Japanese Nintendo, the trademark application is listed to cover purposes including <laughs> video game program, controller, joystick, and download capability electronic game program. A lot of this stuff looks like a lot of the Nintendo 64, boys. What do you think, man? Are we getting another console to put underneath your TV <laughs> next to all the other mini ones? I mean, I I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, clearly, there's not much of a of a plan for an actual like virtual console or, or type of experience on the Switch True. right now, outside of what we know we're getting with the NES games as part of N- Nintendo Switch Online. But... We still don't know what their plan is for the rest of their classic lineup. So for the time being, it looks like the only way that we're going to be getting those, at least in in terms of uh, our current gaming load, is by getting one of these micro consoles and putting them under our TV. So, I mean, I, I wouldn't be shocked at all. There's, I'm a firm believer where there's smoke, there's fire. I've said it uh, a million times, and we've seen three, four, five different things uh, referring to a Nintendo 64 Mini. So I think it's it's all but uh, confirmed at this point. At some point, we're going to see this 
uh, there's a good chance they they roll this out at E3, I think. I really hope at some point Nintendo puts out like a Nintendo official an official Nintendo HDMI switch. I think that'd be really cool if they put one of those out there for like eighty nine dollars. Like, Here, you can yeah. plug all your mini consoles into this and have it go to your TV, and you're not taking up all six uh, slots. So, yeah. uh, Frankie, well, Nintendo sixty four mini. You're like, well, what's the difference with the five dollar one I buy on mono price? Like, <laughs> nothing. Nothing. This just says eighty five dollars. Yeah. 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 It's, <laughs> it's got, got Nintendo's Mario's- logo stamped on it. Yeah, it's got mm-hmm. Mario smiling, waving at you, like saying thanks for the eighty nine bucks. <laughs> but uh, Frank, your thoughts on the possible uh, Nintendo sixty four mini on its way? I, I don't know. I like we have access to an N sixty four, so mm-hmm. you know, and and I feel like a lot of the games I'd want to see on there, there's probably licensing issues with. You know, like mm-hmm. I, I'm pretty sure, I, and I know Donkey Kong sixty four came out on the eShop for the the Wii U, but you know rare developed that game so i you know microsoft probably somehow is really you know involved with that one and like a lot of the games i would want on there, like banjo kazooie like microsoft owns those now so they're not going to be on there um but even at, at that you know there's still a bunch of games that i think are are awesome that'll be nice to see like obviously um uh ocarina of time which you know jd claims is the best zelda game ever maybe he's right i don't know i've never finished it so um but the last good f-zero game was on the n64 last good star fox game is on the n64 so there are a couple games that i would be very interested in playing but i just i don't know with this one if it's worth it just because like i said if i want to play an n64 game i i probably have it mm-hmm. so i i'm not sure where i'm at with this it's it, it'll be cool to see it come back just because my god i keep seeing memes on the internet of kids trying to figure out how to use an n64 controller <laughs> i just it drives me insane every time i see one because it's like people like holding the c stick and you know like <laughs> what are you doing <sighs> uh, so you know, I don't know you know you know man microsoft and nintendo have been pretty chummy uh since the switch came out you know you got to use xbox live or whatever for something to do on for cross play on the nintendo Minecraft, switch or yeah. something yeah, so I mean, it, it's not you know some of those properties might be owned by Microsoft. I wouldn't be surprised if Microsoft throws them a bone and says, "Hey, look, we're 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 chum chum with Nintendo here. You can have some of these games." I wouldn't be surprised if that happened. I don't know. I mean, Rare Replay is a thing, and these games are all for sale on Microsoft's end. True. And I mean, they did Microsoft. Phil Spencer does keep saying, you know, you guys can use Banjo Kazooie for Smash Brothers. You know, like that'd be cool because I think this is the twentieth anniversary of Banjo Kazooie. So if mm-hmm. they can get him in that game, that would be pretty cool. But I don't know, man. It's uh, like I said, just a lot of you know things like Goldeneye. Like that's not going to be on there. You know, you're not going to be able to license that thing. So yeah, that's like the only game I would want on that thing. Honestly, is Goldeneye. Mm, I man. love Goldeneye. Bender, are you going to pick up a, a Nintendo 64 Mini if it comes out? Almost certainly. Um, oh wow! De- there it is. Depends on how, what which games are on it. But like Frankie said, there's a lot of games that they wouldn't be able to put on it because of licensing. Like you mentioned, Banjo Kazooie, <clears throat> Conquers Bad Fur Day, uh, Diddy Kong Racing, Golden Eye. Uh-huh, like there's there's Diddy a whole Kong bunch Racing. of racing. Oh. Yeah, there's a whole <laughs> bunch of them. Great games that that wouldn't be able to be on there. But you know, there's still a lot of other games that, that they could put on there. Mario sixty four, Mario Kart sixty four. Mm-hmm. You know, um, both the Zelda games. You know, there's there's. There's several good games on there that that they could use. I would hope that they would slightly redesign the controller because the uh, the the joystick on the N64 controller wasn't very good. <laughs> it would like over time it would like yeah. just start wobbling and yeah. like wouldn't work work right anymore. <laughs> yeah. So I would hope they would fix that at least. But uh, yeah, this if the, if this happens or when it happens, um, I'll I'll probably be picking one up. You know I. I was talking to a friend of mine about this a week ago, actually, and like the the other classic consoles make sense. Like I feel like a lot of those games have aged fairly well over time. You know, you could pick up a two D platformer and it's great. But the N sixty four and like the PlayStation One era is like getting into three D graphics and it's this awkward like figuring out how that works. So a lot of those games look like shit now. Even mm. going back and playing Banjo Kazooie on on a modern TV, like that game has not aged well at all. Mm. So, like, I think a lot of those games, too, like, Nintendo's going to have to do some work to sharpen them up or something, because, dude, those those awkward polygons on, on modern displays, not a pretty sight. Mm-hmm. 
And I guess that, that's always my biggest fear with like a lot of these games, like backwards compatibility, is they just don't look good. Like I always think about, man, I think it'd be awesome if they brought SOCOM 2 over to PlayStation 2 games on PS4. But then I think about that game and like, do I really want to see it look like shit? And, you know, I just, I don't want to do it. I, I have fond memories of that game. I don't want to pop it up on a big, on an HD 4K display and just see the, how terrible that game has aged. And that's why I'm always, uh, you know, I know, uh, again, I understand why people like backwards compatibility. I dig it. That's fine. But there are certain things I just want to remember for the fun I had with them. I don't want to fire up and be like, man, this, this looks like shit. I don't want to do any of that because that ruins it for me. I want mm-hmm. to keep that nostalgia in place. I want to keep it where it belongs in my past and remember the good times I had with the friends. Certain games I just don't want to see on a big on a big screen TV. Yep. And mm-hmm. uh, the last bit of Nintendo news: there's a new Nintendo uh, 2DS coming out on July 2nd for 160 dollars, and this one looks like the the Hy- Hylian Shield edition. Did you guys take a look at this thing? Mm-hmm. Ben, are you yes. grabbing one? I'm not gonna grab one. I don't need a 2DS, but this thing does look pretty sweet. If I if I needed a 2DS, this would be the one I would get. It looks really cool, really cool. Really, boys, your thoughts on the the Hylian Shield Edition, which comes with a Link Between Worlds pre-installed? I like the way it looks too. I think it's a it's a cool looking system, and if you are in the market for a 2DS, you know I don't I don't see why you wouldn't uh, take a look at this one. It comes like you said pre-installed. With a uh, Zelda game, that bottle accounts is very good. So, um, yeah, I'm um, I'm down with it. Frankie, I know you like some of the things that Nintendo does with these 2DS and 3DSs. What do you think of this one, man? I I, I like the design of it, but like Bender, you're like I don't need another 2DS. I I right. still ha- I bought that turquoise one. I like that one too. I mean, yeah, I feel like a lot of the 2DS designs that they've been doing have been really cool lately. So it, it looks cool, but unfortunately, pass. Mm, okay well you can grab it uh those of you who are interested you can grab it from gamestop it's exclusively at gamestop on july 2nd for 160 dollars. you can pick it up then if you so choose to all right guys let's keep it moving up next mr boyce lego dc supervillain has finally been announced boyce how you feeling about this one buddy feeling good you know the guys talked about earlier in the show the lego games are, are typically really good especially the ones that focus on the superheroes in my opinion the the lego marvel superheroes games have been exceptional uh the lego batman games have been awesome so uh to see a uh, a game based around the lego dc supervillains who they've kind of created this this really uh they're, they're kind of their own interesting villain world through the lego batman games over the over the years so it'll be cool to see them uh, kind of take center stage in their own game here it sounds like uh they've got something with a a parallel earth justice league uh, the the Justice League proper has gone missing mm-hmm. and the Legion of Doom thinks that there's something up with this new version of the Justice League that's kind of taking their place. So you get to <laughs> assume their role, kind of figure out what's going on. So, yeah, I think this is going to be awesome. And my kids absolutely love the Lego games when they when they come out. So it's always fun to, to watch them play through these games. And one of the one of the things they love to do is create their characters in these games. It sounds like that's going to be a big part of Lego DC supervillains as well. You get to create your own villain and mm-hmm. kind of go through and, and interact with the Joker and and uh, you know Lex Luthor and all the other DC supervillains that are in the game. So I ha- I have no doubt it's got co op as well like it always does. So I have no doubt that this is going to be a fun experience, much like the other DC games or the other Lego games before it. So I will uh, keep my eye out for this one in October. Bender, you mentioned earlier you're a big fan of the Lego games. Is this on your radar? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll definitely want to check this one out. It sounds uh, interesting, like an interesting twist on the story and everything. So, uh, yeah, sounds cool. Cool, uh, Frankie. Any interest in this? Yeah, uh, I love what they do with the the Lego, um, you know, comic book games, especially. I feel like they always dig really deep into the catalog of characters. So mm-hmm. we're probably going to see a lot of obscure characters that not all people know about, except for boys. So <laughs> I think it'll be cool, like hearing him, like, you know, some villain that he, he probably liked from a long time ago. He'll be like, holy crap, they put him in this game. You know, like hearing <laughs> stuff like that between him and Jamie is always pretty cool. So, yeah, but I, I typically wait till these drop to like 20 bucks to grab them because, you know, I never play anything I buy and that's always these. So I'm starting mm-hmm. to wait on them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what what platforms is this on? It's on PS4, Xbox One, Switch? Yep. PC. Okay. Well, well you can uh, grab a copy. Damn it. What's that? Uh, the whole gamut. The whole gamut. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, Lego DC Super Villains will be out this October. It'll be available on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC. 
Uh, yeah, so be excited. Man, squeeze that into October. How's that going to sell? <laughs> That's a tough uh, spot for that one, don't you think? I mean, they pretty much always come out at that time of year, so it's uh, it, they've got their group of fans that buy these games, and I don't, I don't think it'll be an issue. Cool. All right, let's move along to the next big story this week. There was a lot of rumors once uh, Bethesda put up a – Man, how long was this thing on Twitch for? They had a video on Twitch for like 24 hours with a Dude, bobblehead people, that was standing people were up. were watching that thing, yeah, for hours. Hours. Trying to figure out what, what's going to happen. That was and cool. uh, finally, we got to see <laughs> what they were going to show. And guys, we are getting a Fallout 76. Mm. They're skipping four or five through 75, <laughs> and they're going right to Fallout 76. <laughs> And uh, no, from this trailer, we didn't, we couldn't glean a whole, a whole lot from it other than the music uh, in the soundtrack mentioned something about West Virginia, so that's possibly the setting we're going to be looking at here. Uh, but the more interesting thing is uh, Kotaku broke an article this week uh, where they talked about uh, Jason Trier discussed some of the things he's heard about Fallout seventy six, and here's what they uh, they reported: Fallout six is in fact an online survival RPG that's heavily inspired by games like Daisy and Rust, according to three people familiar with the project. Those people, speaking anonymously, uh, confirmed that Fallout seventy six is an experimental new entry in the long running post uh post apocalyptic series. When Bethesda first teased the game on Tuesday. Um, fans and pundits speculated that it might be a Fallout 3 remaster or a new Vegas style spinoff in a new location. But as Kotaku reported that afternoon, it is in fact something completely new and completely different. The teaser might lead Fallout fans to believe that this is a traditional entry in the series, but according to one source, that is not the case. Originally prototyped as a multiplayer version of Fallout 4 with the goal of envisioning what an online Fallout game might look like, Fallout 76 has evolved quite a bit over the past few years, the, those sources said. It will have conqu- it'll, ugh, conquest. It will have quests and a story like any other game from Bethesda Game Studios, a developer known for meaty RPGs like Skyrim. It will also feature base building, just like in 2015's Fallout 4, and other survival-based and multiplayer mechanics, according to those sources. One source cautioned that the gameplay is rapidly changing, like it does on in many online service games. But that's the core outline. The game is named after the series Vault 76, which has been mentioned in both Fallout 3 and 4. According to Fallout lore, Vault 76 was meant to open just 20 years after Nuclear War, allowing for a far less civilized setting than previous games. Fallout 76 is in development, not just at Bethesda's Game Studios main office in Maryland, where the likes of Skyrim and Fallout 4 were made, but also at the company's newest branch in Austin, according to sources. The Austin studio, formerly known as Battlecry Studios, had been hard working uh, on an online combat game called Battlecry before that game was canceled. So they have taken over uh, working along with Bat- um, Bethesda Game Studios uh, in Maryland to work on Fallout 76. All right. So now that we know or we have an idea of what Fallout 76 will be per this leak, I want to talk to you guys about this. Frankie, your thoughts on Fallout 76, a game that, that's always been a single-player experience, a single-player RPG with tons, hundreds of hours of stuff. Now this is going to be possibly an online survival RPG. I want to get your thoughts on this, man. I don't know, man. I, a lot of people in those games like to be dicks. You know, um, I remember uh, listening to the Sandbox side quest and they were talking about it. Might, I don't remember if was it Conan, Ark, Rust. It was one of those. I think it was Rust. Mm-hmm. But they're, t- they're, t- they're telling a story of how, you know, you start the game, you have nothing. And this guy who, you know, was high level, saw them, you know, and they were basically like, hey, we're just starting. And he just killed them because he could. They're talking <laughs> about how they like w- they spent like two weeks playing that game <laughs> to like find hunt this guy down. And wait for a moment where he was like asleep. So they had friends going in and like playing for him to make sure their characters were okay. And just like hearing stuff like that, I'm like, I don't, I don't want to deal with any of that. You mm. know, like if if I'm not playing a game, if I you know walk away, you know, like as we do, we all play a lot of games. You know, I don't want to be playing this game, make some progress here, new updates coming, go on, find out my character's dead, I gotta start over. You know, like stuff like that doesn't appeal to me. And I'm not, mm-hmm. Obviously, you know, I don't know if that's gonna be the case with this game. But, you know, that's just the kind of stuff I think about when I start hearing like online survival games. And I I don't know. I um, I, I think there's like some interesting ideas they could explore. You know, if you're doing like a community, um, you know, basically vault, you know, you have like a massive community of players and you're kind of going out on quests to, you know, kind of basically take like the fallout shelter concept and 
turn into like an online fallout game that might mm-hmm. be interesting to see but i don't i don't know like i i'd be more interested in hearing about something like that than something like you know rust so i don't know mm-hmm. i'm interested but i'm not sure you know where i'm gonna fall with it boys where are you at on this man i want to get your thoughts on fallout 76 definitely curious to see more but i'm not really familiar with like rust and, and daisy so what, what what are you doing daisy like what's the point of it what are you what are you doing scavenging for supplies basically so um and i think there's permadeath so every time you die you know other players come take your stuff so then you start over a new character go out scavenge for stuff all over again so Isn't that just the basically the premise of arc as well yeah arc's one of those games too so is conan i think so mm-hmm. yeah so, so it's basically just trying to survive as long as you can. Mm-hmm. And that's that's the premise of it. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. Typically, I, I I haven't been a huge fan of survival games in the past. I've never played a game quite like this, but just survival mechanics have always just kind of been like, I don't know. They always feel like work as opposed to like playing the, <laughs> playing the game. Uh-huh. So. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll be curious to see how the. I mean, Fallout already takes a lot of management with your with your inventory and and as it is. So, uh, I mean, I guess it's a it's a logical step for this for this kind of uh, uh, for the inventory management that that game as has as a big part of it to move that over to this survival setting. And I could see that being mm-hmm. like a uh, you know a logical step for them. But yeah, I'm definitely curious to see more. Not the, uh, you know, not super on board with this yet. I. I'm always leery too, you know, when when you take like a big franchise like this that has millions and millions of fans, and they just expect certain things out of this game, you know, um, mm-hmm. they expect this to be a, a big budget, like uh, hundreds of hours RPG, and like yeah, that's cool if you want to try new concepts, but you know, maybe just make this a new franchise, like maybe not give it the Fallout name and put those certain expectations that are going to be on it. Um, I guess it sounds like though that they were just originally were just trying to expand upon maybe the base building mechanics mm-hmm. that they had in Fallout 4, and it kind of ballooned into this other thing. So I guess that's kind of why the Fallout moniker is there. But obviously, with a game that sold millions upon millions of copies, there's going to be certain expectations for this title, and that's one of the things that I'm, I'm not fully on board with the way they unveiled this game as well. Because when you watch this trailer, if you're not somebody that pays attention to to the to the news cycle or you're just like a you're just a fallout fan out in the world you watch this trailer this looks like any other fallout reveal trailer you would have ever right. seen mm-hmm. like it just looks like you know it's, it's got the same vibe um even the guy's wearing like a blue jacket the guy in fallout 4 was wearing a blue jacket when mm-hmm. when that when that came out as well so you're looking at this you're like oh man a brand new fallout game is about to come out but the way they unveiled this game with and it being like a brand new experience, I almost feel like it might have served them better to wait until E3 to fully unveil this and give us the the full picture of what Fallout 76 is. Because there's going to be a lot of people, at least initially, that are are thinking one thing and and they're going to be uh, kind of uh, kind of a severe punch to the gut when they find out just what Fallout 76 is. But I'm definitely curious to know more. I'm going to be paying close attention at the Bethesda conference at E3. But uh, initially, though, I'm not I'm not fully on board with this yet. I got to I got to see more. Yeah, I think the thing that stands out to my, my to, out to me is like, you know, as we talked about, you know, I, I'm not a fan of Ark. I don't like that type of survival game because it's just there's really no guide or any kind of like direction to it. you just go in there, start crafting and try to survive as long as he can and whatnot. The, the, the things that I like about what we saw here, or at least from this story about what this could possibly be, is that uh, there will be quests and there will yeah. be a story. And that's the kind of stuff that I want to hear from a Fallout game. You know, there's going to be a quest, there's a story, there's going to be places to go. So I don't know if it's going to be a, fl- a, a full-out survival game like we see in Ark. There's going to be some direction. There's going to be quests to do. Um, you know, but I also don't know, I don't want this to be an MMO like ESO either. That's the thing. I don't want an MMO here. But if there's something if they can find something in between that where there's an online area you can play with friends you can work together uh, you can go on quests together you can go on missions maybe almost kind of like a borderlands type situation with some survival elements i'd be cool with something like that but we don't know exactly what this is yet and we will find out at e3 but i'm still rather intrigued with this because and, and it's strange because for the longest time you know, I was always I was always on mind like, man, I never want to see a, an online Fallout game. But because this isn't Fallout Five, like Fallout Five, I want that to be a single player experience. But mm-hmm. we're going with Fallout seventy six here, which is going to be some another type of spin off. Them trying something different with online. That's you know, 
if there's cooperative elements here and there's still a quest line and stories to do, the base building thing, I, I couldn't really get into, but I know a lot of people, there were some incredible bases. I don't know if you guys remember <laughs> when that game came out, people were taking screenshots. There were some incredible bases that people were playing or mm -hmm. that were creating. So I'm cool with that element. I like that that's going to be in there. So I'm, I'm still kind of intrigued by this. I'm actually kind of excited about to see what this is all about. I want to find out more details about what you're going to be doing online, what you can do with other people. And like you said, Frankie, I want to find out if there's going to be like concerns if I'm not there. If I don't play for a couple of days, am I going to come back and my base is burnt to the ground and, my, and I'm dead and all my loot's gone? <laughs> that stuff pisses me off and I just can't get into that. So hopefully the, it's not a, a, a direct like uh, a, um, direct uh, copy of like some of those types of games. I'm still kind of curious about this. Bender, I know that you're a big fan of MMOs, and obviously we, this doesn't sound like it's going to be an MMO, but you know, you've also never been really into the Fallout experience. What are you, what's your take if this is something that's cooperative and there's stories and quest lines for you to do and it's an RPG element? Any interest in possibly jumping into a Fallout game? Uh, possibly. It's <clears throat> something I would have to learn more about, see some gameplay and stuff before I could really make an informed decision. Mm -hmm. But um, it's something I might want to jump into if it's if it's quite a bit different from the regular fallout games mm -hmm. yeah i just think there's some pot there's some there's some potential here this could be really really cool it's just going to depend on what we're going to be dealing with here is this going to be like day like arc where you're just constantly just given no direction but i'm really hoping there's a little bit more here they're saying there's a story in quest i'll listen and i'll listen to what they have to say on e at e3 all right uh some bummer news frankie i know this will bum you out the Wolf Among Us Season 2 has been delayed until 2019. Telltale Games revealed the delay, citing, quote, fundamental changes at the studio. Uh, Telltale saw a company-wide restructure late last year that resulted in layoffs of 25% of the staff. Telltale revealed that despite the delay, it is, quote, committed to exploring new ways to tell our stories and will use the extra time to focus on quality, but also to experiment and iterate in order to craft something truly special. Our goal is to deliver an experience deserving of the passion you've consistently shown for The Wolf Among Us. We're extremely enthusiastic in how the game is progressing so far, and we can't wait to dig even deeper. So Frankie, your thoughts on The Wolf Among Us Season 2 uh, suffering a slight delay here. I mean, looking at what's coming out for the rest of the year, I'm fine with that. <laughs> um, but uh, th this sucks because I, I love the first season of The Wolf Among Us, um, especially the ending. I really want to see what they do you know, with that series going forward. And it, it's one of the only Telltale games since like The Walking Dead came out. And it has, you know, they follow that formula of just playing through the episodes and you get your platinum trophy. This one mm -hmm. requires you to go back and, and play a little bit more, you know, because I think there are cards in the first one to collect. So the, there's there's a lot of stuff to do in the first game. And um, yeah, so I mean, if, if this is going to result in a better game, hopefully, you know, they're optimizing their engine much more. So hopefully, yeah, I mean, it, it's been well past due for them to do that for a while now. So um, mm -hmm. that's, that's that's fine. I'm, I'm kind of hoping, you know, in doing this that maybe, you know, they're, they're able to get more work in on some of the back episodes. So we don't see like, you know, two, three months between episodes, you know. Yeah, I know they've been getting a little bit better about a release schedule, but I think they still fall behind, you know, towards the tail end of a season, especially the last Batman game. I know that last episode took a couple months to come out. So I don't know. I'd like to see them kind of, you know, essentially almost be done with it and keep a strict schedule with it, especially for delaying mm -hmm. it. Wasn't Batman? Now, Batman was the last Telltale series that came out, right? Yes. And that's so. and that still had some serious technical issues, didn't it? Uh, like yeah. the first couple episodes anyways? Yeah. Yeah, maybe hopefully, hopefully, man, I would like to see them try to refine that engine a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, boys, your thoughts on the delay and these, uh, quote, fundamental changes at the studio. Any concerns with The Wolf Among Us Season 2? No, I was just thinking about this, but um, like you said, Batman, as far as we can remember, is the last Telltale game that, that came out. That one finished a while ago now. So like, when was the last time we went several months and didn't have uh a telltale game that was active or that had episodes coming out or that had something planned for the future or whatever like uh, obviously walking dead is, is in the future and they're they're working on the wolf among us season two but clearly the formula that they had before they ran into the ground and people were just not uh responding to these games that they were when when the walking dead first season came out and it was like a new and exciting thing so they've you know this the days of them having you know, multiple, multiple games running at the same time or putting out 
like six, seven releases in a, in a year. I think those have passed now. So like you said, hopefully this lets them put more work into the engine. I mean, they've, mm-hmm. I feel like we've been talking about this engine for like 10 years, <laughs> you know, them, them refining the engine or working on the engine or making it better or whatnot. So uh, maybe at some point, maybe they'll, they'll figure out what's going on with the engine. I mean, they're making a, uh, an adventure game. I mean, this shouldn't be like something where they need like a top of the line engine here. That, that's just like the engine to end all engines. Like they should mm-hmm. be able to to create something. I feel like that that works without without having all these without having all these bugs. It's just really weird. So uh, yeah, so hopefully that that's part of the plan. But like Frankie mentioned, there's so many games coming out for the rest of this year. The fact that the Wolf Among Us season two is not going to be a part of this fall's lineup, I don't think anybody's going to notice. Um, mm-hmm. So if if they can take their time, put some work into this, refine the engine, give us a a, a season two that that this franchise deserves, then you know, nobody's going to remember that this thing was delayed. Mm-hmm. Bender, did you ever play season one? I did. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, did you like it? Um, why is Frankie so surprised? I thought you knew I played Wolf Among Us season one. I thought you didn't. I thought you talked about the other day that you didn't play that one. Maybe it was Batman. Mm-mm. I know we're talking about one. I haven't of them. played. I've, I haven't played Batman season two yet. Yeah. Maybe that's what it was. I know we're talking about mm. these the other day though. Yeah, yeah, no, I I really liked Wolf Among Us season one. I thought that it was had some really cool characters, some unexpected twists in the plot. Um, I thought it was really good. Um, and if if this means that they're refining the engine, like the guys were saying, I mean, I hope that's what they're doing. Uh, that way we won't have like Batman uh, you know, <laughs> criminals with uh, just eyeballs Eyes. and teeth running around, <laughs> <laughs> and we won't have so many crashes like we do with with all the Telltale games, right? Um. I think that would be great if they can fix all that stuff and and have a nice smooth running game. Then it'll be uh, all the better. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to Wolf Among Us season two. I I think it, it was a cool series, and I like I look forward to seeing what they do next with it. Man, I absolutely <laughs> loved episode one of season one, and that's all <laughs> I ever played. And I hate it because I I seriously loved episode one, but because there was always a wait between that's 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 my always my biggest issue with Telltale games is with with so many games coming out during the year, it's so difficult for me to like play one episode and then months later find time to squeeze an episode two. And I'm like, I don't remember what happened in episode one. Even though I know that your choices are saved, I've I haven't played it in so long. I don't remember the what happened in between those choices. So that's always the hardest thing to kind of get me back into a game. That's why I need to eventually just wait until see I'm cool with it not coming out this year. That's fine. Um, but I wish they would just release these damn things much like they do Netflix. Like take your time with it, kick out all the episodes, release the whole thing and, and do it that way. It's just, it's so hard for me to get into a game when it's released periodically like that. And then even then after the final episodes come out, I'm playing other games and it's just like, oh, crap, do I have time to go back and get this in now? So it's just, it's, it's kind of a pain in the ass, but I, I do, I, I seriously, I really liked episode one. I thought that game was really, really good. I was like, this is a cool ass story. I like these characters. Like Bender mentioned, the characters are awesome in that game. Uh, but, and, but I do have it downloaded on the PS4. I am, I have the whole season one ready to go at some point. My fat ass is going to sit down here and play through. I'll do it on a Tuesday. I don't know how long each episode is or how long it would take to play through all of them, but I will do it one of these days. I really want to see that thing through the end because I really did like that first episode. Yeah, like but, a... Yeah, you can't... Oh, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, you can't really play them all in one sitting because I think it's like, what, like two hours per episode yeah. or something like that usually. Yeah. Um, but... I definitely recommend just for any Telltale game, just wait till all the episodes are out and mm-hmm. then play them at your leisure whenever you can. You can get through them in like a week, just playing a you know an episode a night or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what that's what I like to do. That's why I still haven't played Batman because they just came out with the fifth episode. Mm-hmm. So now that they're all out, now I can find time to 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 try to squeeze that in and play through that. But um, but yeah, yeah, I definitely recommend that you play Wolf Among Us whenever you can. Mm-hmm. Yep, it's definitely on my to do list, so I will get that in at some point. All right, moving on from the Wolf Among Us, we're gonna talk a little bit about Assassin's Creed. Now, I was under the impression that Origins came out, and they were gonna like, okay, look, we're just gonna stick with the two year cycle. Nope, not happening. <laughs> uh, we can expect to see. Another Assassin's Creed reveal uh, at E3 this year, and apparently this one is set in ancient Greece. Now, we didn't get a whole lot of this. We basically had them kick something out on Twitter (laughs) where it shows one guy kicking another guy off a cliff, and that's all we got. But 
being able to glean from that, it looks like this is going to take place in ancient Greece. Uh, Frankie, I want to get your thoughts on this, man. Now, I know you weren't. You're, you're. I know you're a fan of like the older Assassin's Creed game. Origins never spoke to you. What's your thoughts on an Assassin's Creed game taking place in ancient Greece? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, my my biggest problem is going to be if they keep the same changes they made. You know, like I don't like the new combat system at all. That's my biggest turnoff to it. Um, but. I don't know. I I was kind of hoping that they would continue that route of giving it, you know, a couple years development cycle, you know, kind of mm -hmm. rotate between Watch Dogs and Assassins every other year. Like, I thought that would have been fine, but um, I don't know. And, and who knows? Like, this game might not even be coming out this year. You know, we, we don't know. Maybe they'll announce True. it this year and, you know, it'll come out next year. But um, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm always willing to give Assassin's Creed games a shot. I still mm -hmm. want to go back to Origins at some point and, you know, it's gotta be something to miss at that game, you know. People love it. People keep putting it up there with two, and mm -hmm. and, and Syndicate. So I, you know, I, obviously there's just something I missed with it. But um, I don't know, man. That, that new combat system still takes some getting used to. So, right. We'll see. Well, here here's some information that we do have on it, according to some sources. Uh, while Origins added Witcher-like RPG elements, Odyssey will take things further. So, um bringing dialogue options to the series for the first time. You'll be able to play as either a male or female protagonist, although the builds we've heard about do not feature Origins uh, main characters Bayek or Aya, but new heroes. Also, two of those sources confirm that Odyssey will be out during Ubisoft's 2019 fiscal year, which ends March 31st, 2019. Although the previously analyzed series has skipped 2016 in the wake of 2014's disappointing Unity, it's likely that this one will be out this fall, returning to the yearly schedule for which the popular franchise has been long known for. You ever thought? Yes. Uh-oh. Didn't Ubisoft say that they delayed a game out of the fiscal year, an unannounced AAA game? Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Well, that's it's possible. I mean, but these I don't know when these sources told them this. So these sources are saying it's due out in fiscal 2019. That is that means before March. I mean, that's still possibly going to be within a window. But I mean, how long did they say it was delayed for when Ubisoft announced it? Did they say if it was delayed like like into deep 2019? No, I think they just delayed it out of 2019's fiscal year. So, hmm. Hmm. I guess still put. Like, I mean, Assassins typically like the mainline games always come out in November or you right. know, late October. So, mm -hmm. uh, like I, I, I'm pretty sure they're gonna be like remaking you know the first one or the third one. I, I just feel like that's the next step for them because I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I have a hard time seeing them doing going back to the old schedule. You know, especially with how successful this one was for them. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's an interesting point, boys. What's your thoughts on this, man? You know, I'm thinking, uh, obviously, you know, this this fall is going to be very busy, and the window that Assassin's Creed typically comes out in is now occupied by Red Dead Redemption 2, which is a game that nobody wants a part of. And Ubisoft released a little game uh, called Ghost Recon Wildlands in March earlier this year, and it it, uh, it took the, uh, or was it last year? How long has Wildlands been on? It's last year. Last March, I believe it was. Yeah. So Wildlands came out, took the world by storm, was a huge hit for Ubisoft. So they now can look at that that late fiscal year, that March time frame, and they know that they can release one of their big franchises in that window, and it's going to do mm -hmm. very, very well. They did it with Far Cry as, as well. So they, they released it in that window, and it, it went on to, to sell very, very well. So I actually think they'd be comfortable with taking an Assassin's Creed uh, Odyssey and moving it out of that October time frame, getting it away as far away as possible from Red Dead Redemption 2 and moving it into that late fiscal year window where they've been extremely successful with Far Cry and Ghost Recon Wildlands in the in the last couple of years. So I could I could definitely see them trying to switch up the formula a little bit with that. And uh, personally, I've, I'm uh, very curious to see what they do with Greece. Just the fact that the teaser video is the, the, the This Is Sparta and uh, kicking the guy off off the off the edge, I think is awesome. So, uh, <laughs> definitely definitely want to see what they're doing in that setting. I always love the ancient Greece setting. So, uh, yeah, I'm down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, you know, like Frankie, I, I like the fact that they took that year off and delivered a polished experience to Origins. I think Origins is a really fun game. Um, you know, with this reveal, it just feels like I, I 
I hope they're not rushing this out now. You know, I, I like that they took that time off. Now we're kind of getting back into this annual cycle. Uh, you know, I I think that's what part part of me that I really liked about Origins that it just felt refined. It felt like that extra two year that extra year paid off. I don't want to kind of go back to like a, another Unity situation with this one. Uh, but and that's not to say that would happen. I'm sure they learned from their mistakes. It's just uh, I really did like the fact that they skipped a year, and I wasn't expecting an Assassin's Creed game this year, but. Here we go. Here's Odyssey. And like you said, though, this could easily slip into March. Uh, and, and it actually makes sense for them to go to March. Like you said, nothing really there open in October. November is like pretty much Nintendo month now. Uh, so, yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if this does slip into 2000 or into like, you know, the spring or early winter, late. Sp- or, wow. What am I thinking? Winter time uh, in 2019. That's a, that's that, that's a real good possibility of that. I don't know. I think since they have the division coming, I, I see that being their big March push title. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, and Assassins is typical. Well, that, that again, so is Far Cry, but I don't know. I just I have a hard time seeing them wanting to pull Assassins in earlier in the year. I mean, you know, like Boy said, it, it worked well for Far Cry Five. So maybe, and, and you know, maybe Watch Dogs may be the game that they kind of push into the spring because I think that one kind of struggles. But I feel like Assassins always does pretty well coming out where it's coming out. Whereas I think like mm-hmm. the past Far Cry and, um, you know, a couple of these other games are kind of shoving into the spring, maybe didn't do as well when they were coming out around, you know, Call of Duty. So mm-hmm. actually, uh, I forgot all about the division, too. So mm-hmm. I, I think that's definitely coming out in March. So, yeah, it would make sense for them to release Assassin's Creed in, this, in the same month they're releasing the division, too. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. So I guess if they go in the fall, they'd have to either get before Red Dead. Yeah, but then they're in that window with all these other third party games that are trying to do the same thing in early October or maybe they slot later into into November. Maybe they slide in uh, around Black Friday or um, I mean, if they if they come out in the fall, they'll definitely be out before Black Friday. So maybe the weekend before Black Friday or something like that, they, they try and sneak out there. Um, you don't think they try to do what they did with Siege come out in December? Yeah, they could do that. They they could. I just feel like Assassin's Creed is always like a a, a Black Friday draw, and Ubisoft mm-hmm. knows that. And mm-hmm. I feel like that's a game that they would want out prior to that if they, if they're going to bring it out at that time. Good point. Good point. Um, yeah, and I, th- I believe the first division. I think that came out in March as well. So I mean, yeah, that seems yeah. like that's a that's a yeah. spot for that uh, division two to slip out. So, all right, moving on from Assassin's Creed, another voice moment here. This is another big voice title. Mega Man 11 is launching on October 2nd on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC. Voice, give me your thoughts on Mega Man 11, buddy. Real excited, man. Um, you know, it's, it's funny because Mega Man 11, it, it's got this really beautiful art style. So mm-hmm. this is, it, it looks like a, an animation cell in motion. It uh, it's, it's really crisp, clean line animated style that uh, that I'm really digging. And uh, I say it's funny because Mega Man 11 looks like what I expected Mighty Number no. Nine to look like <laughs> when it when it came out. Like when they initially showed like the original concept art for Mighty Number no. Nine, and they even had you know a few screens of what the game might look like. Like it kind of looked like this game. It had this clean line, this almost animation style look to it. And you know what we got was obviously far from that. But uh, but yeah, I I love the the style of this game and. And it looks like they're taking this kind of beautiful new look. It's, it's still two dimensional. It's still the Mega Man we know and love. So they're just kind of wrapping it in this in this new shell. And I'm and I'm totally on board for that. So we see the Mega Buster. We see sliding. We see Rush. We see the Robot Masters. We see the precision platforming, like all the stuff that I love about the Mega Man games, clearly on display in the trailer here. And they've got this new system too. This uh, double gear system, I think they're calling it, where. You can actually tap into some new abilities for Mega Man in, in terms of uh, overcharging his Mega Buster and also slowing down time. Um, hmm. So it's going to be really interesting to see how these mechanics factor in to the to the gameplay. And I also like that they said that um, you can actually play through this game without these new mechanics. So you can still play through it and, and beat these levels with, with a pure Mega Man experience. And I'd be very surprised if they weren't trophies or achievements tied to doing just that. So, um, so I'm really excited to see, to to play this game. You know, to get a brand new two dimensional classic Mega Man experience is is something I'm always down for. Um, and I don't care when it launches, October, November, it could come out the same day as Red Dead. I don't really give a damn. So, so Me- Mega it. Man, 
Yeah, Mega Man. Yeah, I still won't play it. Mega Man uh, is, uh, you know, Mega Man is Mega Man. The Mega Man fans are out there. They're going to buy this game regardless. So, uh, but I'm I'm very, very excited about this game. I think the two robot masters they've shown have some really cool designs as well. So, uh, I am rip-roaring ready to go with this, man. It's going to be a, a good Mega Man year with all the all the stuff coming out. Oh, yeah. Now, I for a while, I was trying to figure out what platform Bender and Frankie would buy this on. But now I know because there's an Amiibo. Coming out with Mega Man 11. And uh, so I'm pretty much sure that solidifies that you guys will be picking this up on the Switch. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm actually, uh, the Mega Man Legacy Collection just came out a couple weeks ago. So I want to, I feel like the Switch is where I'm finally going to play the Mega Man game. So yeah, I'm I'm getting, I'm not getting the Amiibo bundle, but I'm going to get it on the Switch. Mm. Ben, are you going to get the Amiibo bundle? Um, yeah, maybe. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, it's a decent looking it's amiibo, dude. It's a decent looking amiibo. So uh, October second, PlayStation Four, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC. Mega Man Eleven will be there. All right. Next news we want to talk about. Last week we got a glimpse of Battlefield Five. Uh, we can confirm now that this will take place during World War Two. Um, we got a, a lengthy trailer here, and um, some of the, you know, Bun- or Dice actually came out and said that uh, this trailer featured engine footage which i thought this was all like just what's that they always say that yeah yeah they do but i mean this 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 trailer looked really really good and this some of if any of this is in-game footage then yeah i'll be grabbing this on pc i mean at Um, the at the end of the trailer there's a hud and there's there's like things going on so i mean it mm -hmm. looked like they were playing the game during the trailer mm mm-hmm yeah, I mean this. This is a, it's a beautiful looking game. This looks rad. Um, now here's some of the stuff that we've gotten from this so far. Here's some of the stuff we've learned uh, regarding Battlefield Five. First, war stories will return, and the mantra is f- to focus on the unseen, untold, unplayed aspects of World War Two. They play out as small, self-contained narratives inspired by real time or real events. Uh, then we have combined ops. Uh, is the name given to Bla- Battlefield Five's co-op game in which up to four players play together in what dice describes as an intimate yet social mode that sits somewhere between single and multiplayer it's also a good place to learn the ropes of battlefield especially for those who've been previously overwhelmed by the size of the series signature large-scale multiplayer battlefield 5 promises a sense of physicality not seen in previous games in the series this was demonstrated in a number of ways firstly by a soldier running through waist high water he lifts his knee high in an attempt to move as quickly as possible but the drag of the water slows him down as the water shallows the way he moves changes in battlefield 1 everyone had a gas mask in battlefield 5 everyone is equipped with a tool which enables them to build fortifications promise to change new battle the way battlefield plays because you'll be able to build defenses as well as knocking buildings down jesus this fortnite all of a sudden <laughs> Oh, and knock stuff down and build stuff. Uh, a handful of fortifications available were announced from foxholes to trenches, sandbags, barbed wire, and tank traps. Jeez, you can build a lot of stuff. It's also possible to rebuild destroyed buildings to a certain extent to create makeshift strongholds at midway points on the map. Perhaps the biggest point dice stressed is how playing as a squad unpins everything in Battlefield Five. You can play as a lone wolf, but it's not the default option, and you won't be able to access some of the perks and rewards on offer. And then lastly, we found out about Grand Operations. It's a battle, is a multiplayer mode with a strong narrative element. Essentially, there are two teams, attackers, defenders. The goal of the attackers is to continually push forward until they conquer the map, while the defenders must resist. In Battlefield 5's Grand Operations, this assault takes place over potentially four in-game days, with long matches taking up to an hour. Specific objectives change from day to day, and what you achieve on one day impacts on what happens the next. The attrition of war is something DICE is trying to convey, and so each day the odds are increasingly stacked against you. Some of this stuff actually sounds pretty good. Um, Frank, you want to come to you first? Did you check out the trailer? And if not, that's fine. What are your thoughts on what we're hearing here about Battlefield Five? I did check out the trailer. Um, As far as all this stuff goes, uh, I don't know, man. Like, I, I don't think i want to be playing the same multiplayer match for upwards of an hour that just sounds terrible <laughs> um and I, I was thinking the other day that actually you know like i, I know the battle royale things this big thing but like i feel like battlefield is gonna be the franchise that actually 
can do something with it because they have they've always had like you know these big 64 player maps and and all kinds of stuff so i mean like this is the kind of stuff that they've been you know working with for a long time so i feel Mm -hmm. like out of the gate like they probably have the potential to bring something like that over and like offer a ton of maps and all kinds of stuff that's you know going to be like a better battle royale experience for people who like that kind of thing like battlefield's Mm -hmm. like prime for that but um as far as everything else goes like that um what's the second thing you're talking about that sounds an awful lot like spec ops the co-op um missions yeah combined ops yeah it sounds a lot like spec ops you know what i'm saying so boys what do you think man what's your take on what we've seen so far and heard yeah i i really like the stuff that we've seen so far like you mentioned that the reveal trailer was (laughs) drop dead gorgeous i mean (laughs) once once again battlefield pushing the the boundary in terms of, of visual fidelity in the shooter space i mean the trailer was just just like eyeballs popping out of your head in terms of in terms of the way that it looked but uh yeah some of the stuff that frankie mentioned stood out to me as well specifically the combined arms thing um and and to me this is this is the part of the description that i liked as a group of paratroopers you're dropped behind enemy lines and the goal is to stay undetected while making your way to the objective as you're working as a small unit, ammo and supplies are limited, and gathering the right equipment to complete the objective and working as a team to make the most of the resources available is key to success. Dice said a mission generator will create dynamic objectives, but didn't go into details as to how it's going to work. Mm. So that, that sounds pretty sweet to me. Um, yeah, now so when, I, you descri- when it's described as that, yeah, now I'm intrigued. Yeah. That does sound <laughs> sweet. Yeah, so that, that sounds like that could be really fun, sneaking behind enemy lines, limited supplies, uh, dynamic objectives coming through on the fly. Like that, like that could be really, really fun if it's done well. So being able to, to have up to four people in that mode sounds awesome. Obviously, War Stories was extremely popular in Battlefield 1, so it's, it makes sense that it, it would return here. Yeah, I'm with you guys on the building mechanics. I have to imagine that uh, that maybe this is a part of a specific mode or it's it's something that we'll see in the over the course of the campaign as maybe a part of the world war ii experience you know uh, creating fortifications or whatnot i just i can't see this being like being in the middle of conquest and you just start building stuff it would, it would just be it would just be weird but maybe not maybe they figured out a way to integrate it into the gameplay where it makes sense we'll uh we'll see what that's all about um and then uh yeah this this grand operations um I, I I definitely am curious to see how this plays out. You know, to have this big like narrative thing, even though uh, you know to, to uh, Frankie makes sense there when he says uh, you know an hour long uh, multi <laughs> multiplayer match um, seems kind of weird at first. But you know if they if they do this correctly and they've got some kind of narrative thread and it's uh, it's you know it's, it's fun how it all takes out. I'm I'm just curious to see see what it's all about. So I mean I, I like what we've seen from Battlefield. I think Battlefield's always been a, a really fun series like what I've seen here, and I'm, I'm curious to see more at, at EA Play coming up here soon. Mm-hmm. You know, and he mentioned, you know, the, the building thing. I, I have to believe this is going to be in, in, in just about every mode because it says everyone is equipped with this tool. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and, you know, you can build trenches, sandbags, barbed wire, and tank traps. So if there's tank traps you can build, I, there's tanks in conquest mode. So I got to believe this yeah. this building thing is going to be in every mode. It's going to be a, an integral part of the gameplay experience. Um, you know, as but you know, you know, I don't mind that people are building trenches. That is a part of World War II. That's part of warfare, trenches, sandbags, barbed wire. As long yeah. as it's not like like major things that you can build. Like if it's stuff that is part of strategy that comes into the strategy of holding down certain areas, then I guess I understand. I think that sounds pretty cool, but um, you know, as long as it's just not overdone like Fortnite. I mean, I, I, I don't see it being like Fortnite, yeah. but, you know, as long as it's toned down a bit to kind of fit into the World War II setting. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I mean, I think it could be cool to build trenches and put a trap down to, to suppress a tank or, what kind of, or whatnot. I think that would be fine. Mm-hmm. But And like you said, I don't think we'll be like building towers and <laughs> going right. up, like, like <laughs> building steps and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, but... Uh, I think they said something about repairing uh, terrain or something too. Isn't and they have that in there? About yeah, repairing. oh, they're hoeing dirt, re- re- rebuilding dirt. like <laughs> destroyed buildings. Yeah, rebuilding destroyed buildings. So that that's the that's definitely the strangest sounding part. So we'll have to see yeah. what they do with that. Maybe you can rebuild a structure that you previously built. I don't know, but um, mm-hmm. but yeah. I I guess my question is, um, you know, with this tool, like. Are they? Does this mean they're getting rid of the different classes? Maybe they did in Battlefield One. I didn't play enough of it to remember. But 
You know, like they each... definitely have classes. They definitely have yeah. classes. They talk about it in here. But I mean, mm-hmm. like that's what this tool sounds like. You know, like you had mm-hmm. like those different abilities were tied to your class. So are they kind of taking mm-hmm. that and just giving everyone like the ability to do whatever they want now? Like I, I mean, that's I guess that's cool to an extent. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've you know been playing as a medic and and wish you know I could throw out an ammo crate or repair a tank, but um, right. I, I don't know. Like I. I, I do enjoy like the fact that it does make like you know playing a certain class a unique feature. So I I feel mm-hmm. like you're kind of taking that away and making that like just accessible to everybody. You know. Mm-hmm. And, and that's why it's going to be important to see how they implement it because, you know, like you said, the classes I'm sure are, are still going to be very unique and there's certain things that they can do. And, and as long as the building portion isn't completely overdone, I don't think it'll be a problem if everyone has that one thing. Like they mentioned, everyone had gas masks in the first game. They kind of had their own thing, but gas masks don't doesn't change the terrain, doesn't change the battlefield. So this is going to be a much more important tool mm-hmm. than the gas mask. So again, it's just it's just going to depend on how it's implemented. And uh, hopefully it's it's not too overdone. That's just my only concern. My, my other question was that uh, that that last mode that you mentioned, the one that could take up to an hour, that's a multiplayer, like competitive multiplayer mode, right? Yeah, like attackers and defenders. It's like, uh, what was, okay. was it called? Operations in the previous Battlefield games where you have to start at one point yeah. and then battle. And then if the, the attacking team succeeds, they move to the next point up the map. Oh, yeah, Is yeah. Is that called Operations or I, I know in, I can't remember, in Bad I can't remember Company it was, it was called. called Rush, but... Rush, that's the mode, yeah. rush mode. Okay. It sounds like that, but far more, you know, more elaborate, you know, covering four in-game days. And I do like the fact that what you do one day is going to influence what happens on the map the next day. So that that, that could mean, you know, you could have different playouts every time you do this mode. Uh, things could be different every time. But again, the whole hour-long thing, I don't know how well that's going to do. But like Boyce mentioned, if it's, if there's a strong narrative there, if it's, if it's interesting, there's a lot of stuff to do and it's, it's different every time you do it, then I guess there's some positives there. Yeah. I, I guess I was thinking like, if it was a, a PVE thing, like if they're doing something like strike missions in destiny, like mm, I think exploring mm-hmm. something like that in a war setting would be pretty cool. You know, like mm-hmm. the stories you could tell through that, but if it's just competitive multiplayer, I don't, I'm st- I don't think so. <laughs> Yeah, that's the, it says it's attackers and defenders, so there'll definitely be uh, two sides competitive. So, <laughs> yeah, they uh, they actually have an example on here of how one of these scenarios might play out. So they mention on day one, attackers are cast as paratroopers, tasked with dropping behind enemy lines and sabotaging long range artillery. Defenders try to take out the drop ships, and it's entirely possible to wipe out entire squads with a single shot. If the attackers don't sabotage enough of these guns. That side suffers heavy casualties and it will impact what happens on the second day. Day two, and attackers have taken to the ground, but the number of vehicles and resource, uh, but the number of vehicles and resources on how many guns you took out on the previous day. On day three, the conflict continues in another part of Rotterdam, on a map showing heavy destruction. It's possible for the match to end here if one side has a clear advantage, but if not, it goes to sudden death. The fourth day has a very different style of play. You've been fighting for four days, and DICE wants you to feel like you're exhausted, out of resources, and out of soldiers. This round is known as Last Stand. Each player has a single life and one mag of ammo, with no, oh, man. With no additional supplies save for what your squad can provide. There are no respawns, but you can be revived by your squad mates. And to make things even more dramatic for this final round, the dynamic weather is dialed up to create as dramatic a finale as possible. <laughs> Now, I'm not going to lie, that sounds pretty sweet. Yeah. I, I like the sound of sudden death there. So, again, it, it's just going to depend on how this is implemented, if there's a strong story there. And, you know, I love the inclusion of dynamic weather. I love dynamic weather in games like Battlefield especially. It just always changes the, the dynamic of the game, what's happening, how you're going to handle things, and how you uh, uh, how you attack the enemy. So I think that's cool. That that Again, that sounds really interesting. I'll be curious to see if we, if we get a demo of this at E3. A um, couple more things I want to mention about this, though. First up, um, no loot boxes. EA is starting to learn. Congratulations. No loot boxes. But Dice especially. They're like, Dice uh, we, especially. We, we, don't, we don't want to go anywhere near loot boxes right now. <laughs> but the more impressive thing, no premium pass. That's that's a big one. Hmm. That is really big because the premium pass has been a staple uh, among the Battlefield games the last, I don't even know, 10 years. I mean, yeah. it just seems like and, the premium pass has Duty. always been there. And Call of Duty. Yeah. So the fact that there is no premium pass 
is 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 good news for gamers. That is awesome uh, to to hear that as well. So uh, a lot of good stuff from this Battlefield Five reveal. Anything else you want to add to it, boys? Uh, there is this other new mode too called Airborne, where mm-hmm. uh, where players parachute onto the map and destroy or defend artillery on the ground, all while explosive dogfights presumably take place in the air above. So this sounds like a pretty interesting mode. Um, so uh, yeah, you you have to work with your squad to destroy enemy artillery or defend them and make sure the threat above is dealt with. Um, so uh, that'd be that uh, sounds like they have quite a few modes that they're working on for this game and quite the variety that they're going to be putting mm-hmm. into this. So uh, so yeah, that 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 sounds kind of neat as well. Mm-hmm. Man, this sounds like a bender joint all over it, man. What do you <laughs> think, bender? Say what? I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. I <laughs> know. Oh, ba- that, that's the point. It's Battlefield. I know you're not listening. Awesome. Last couple things we want to touch on here real quick. Uh, the Korean Games Rating Board is at it again. Put it in stone, uh, baby. Lock it up. <laughs> <laughs> they have listed Borderlands Game of the Year Edition for PlayStation 4, <laughs> Xbox One, and PC. Yes. Though it's a bit interesting since the same name title is already available on Steam. But uh, so... Guys, I mean, this is pretty much as as good as gold, right? This is this is happening. This is this is as good as done, Lock and it makes sense because we just found out recently on, on the two K earnings call they talked about how they delayed a big upcoming title, uh, and it's presumably Borderlands three that's going to get pushed out. So why not kick out the first one so you have the entire collection mm-hmm. to play through in the meantime on PlayStation four and Xbox one, which is awesome because I'm telling you, man, the 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 the, the the Handsome Jack collection looks incredible at 60 frames. If you can get Borderlands 2 and, and the prequel on there and, and it runs at 60 frames, it's beautiful. I'd love to see the first one come out as well. Get the whole collection on there so when Borderlands 3 comes out, you've already played through everything. So I'm with you guys. Oh, yes. This is this is happening. This will get announced at some point, and uh, we will get the entire collection on these next-gen consoles. Yes. I love Borderlands 1. Love oh, Warlands one is awesome. I really like that you, uh, game. They're they're just they're so fun. You hit the nail on the head there, man. With the uh, the presumed delay of Borderlands three, this being a stopgap to lead us into that title and getting people excited to have the whole saga on their current generation system. And this this all adds up. So this this makes perfect mm-hmm. sense. Yep. So well, thanks, Korean Games Rating Board. We know what's happening. Plus, if you'd played this on PS3, the last area in that game just drug. Yes. Like single yes. frames, probably. So it was really chuggy. I do remember that. It was terrible. Oh, man. Yes, I do remember that. So, uh, and then the last thing, Mr. Boyce, Team Sonic Racing has officially been confirmed by Walmart once again. <laughs> Another yeah, leak. Yes. Thanks, Walmart. Walmart firing on all cylinders here with uh, with their <laughs> with their leaks. So what what else but, did uh, what else did they have on that list? Was Splinter Cell on there? Yeah, Splinter Cell so, was on there. I mean, it was just a ton of yeah, stuff. I so. mean, it's they're all coming true. Yeah. So, any thoughts on uh, Team Sonic Racing? Uh, I mean, uh, you know, we mentioned uh, Sonic uh, Racing earlier in the show with the with the games with gold. How that's a cool game. You know, Frankie was talking about it. So. Uh, I would imagine that Team Sonic Racing, the sequel that a lot of people have been asking for for a long time, would be uh, would be pretty rad as well. Sounds like it's coming to PS4, Xbox One, and PC. No uh, Switch announcement just yet, but uh, mm-hmm. this would make sense on that platform as well. But uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, I, uh, I I'm really interested to see what this turns out to be, and I can't imagine it not being fun. Absolutely. All right. So now that we got the news out of the way, we can talk about the most important thing. E3 and our plans as well as our predictions. But boys, let's talk about what we have planned for short pause gaming over the course of E3, man. What do, what do we got? What can the viewers expect? So uh, this year, much as we did last year, we will come to you um, with our with our reveals. What are, you, what are you holding up? Oh, they got it for the Switch now. There you go. So now confirmed for the Switch as well. Uh, <laughs> hot off the presses. Um. So yeah, and in terms of in terms of E3, so we are are uh, going to do our best to bring you as much live coverage as possible. So we'll have live reaction videos, and then of uh, of course our our recap videos afterwards, where we discuss everything that was announced during the stream. So this year, um, much like last year, the conferences are are spread out over four days. So we got uh, four days of activity here. The uh, the EA conference will be on uh, Saturday. Um, I should probably pull up the times here so we can. <laughs> in, inform the people. Um, so on Saturday at uh, 11 a.m. Pacific time, EA Play will go live. That's 2 p.m. Eastern. 
And uh, this should be a big conference. You know, we're expecting to see Anthem. Um, we're, we're expecting to see Battlefield 5, obviously. So there should be a lot of cool stuff that we're going to see during this conference. Uh, Brent, uh, there's a possibility you may not be available when this is streaming live. So we, we will bring you our, uh, we probably won't have a live reaction video to EA, but we will bring you our, our recap video uh, later on that afternoon once uh, mm -hmm. we're able to get everybody together and we'll talk about everything that was announced during EA. Um, Sunday time. Uh, for Microsoft, once again, Brent, you may not be available. So we, I will be available. You, you will I will be, be available. available. You will be available. Confirmed, okay. yes. Confirmed that you will be available. So Sunday, yes, sir. we'll be running the full gamut of coverage. We will have live video, uh, live reaction videos to both Microsoft and Bethesda. Microsoft's at 1 p.m. Pacific. Bethesda's at 6.30 Pacific, so that's 4 p.m. and 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. So we will have live reaction videos as we're watching the conference, and then we'll have full recaps afterwards that you guys can stay tuned to and, and get our, our full thoughts on the show. Uh, Monday is a busy day. Square Enix is at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Ubisoft, which uh, we're really anticipating being a big one, is at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. And Sony wraps up the day at 9 p.m., uh, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Now, for these ones, uh, um, we will not have live reaction videos for Square and for Ubisoft. We will have one for Sony, followed by a recap video. Prior to the Sony conference right now, Brent, we're anticipating doing the Ubisoft reaction show. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So um, we'll do the Ubisoft reaction show once uh, we're able to get everyone together. At that point, it'll be a few hours before the Sony conference. We'll get that knocked out so you guys can look forward to that, and then we'll be live with the Sony conference the following morning. Uh, we will give you our Square Enix reaction show prior to the Nintendo conference. So be on the lookout for that. Nintendo goes live at 12. Um, we will have a live reaction for that. Yes? No? We're not sure, not sure on yet. that one. Okay. So we may or may not have a live reaction for that. And then later on, uh, if we don't get the live reaction later on that afternoon, we will have our Nintendo kind of a uh, um, recap video where we talk about everything mm -hmm. that was announced during that presentation. So I think that covers it, Brent. That's that's everything. So uh, I, I know it's confusing. Hopefully you guys are able to follow that. But for the most part, we'll be here for most of the conferences with live reaction videos. The ones that we're not here for, we'll give you our recap video a little bit later in the day after the conference has wrapped up. So just be on the lookout for that. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell like Brent was talking about to get all of our content. But we'll have a ton of stuff going on over uh over the course of those four days for e3 yeah and those live streams uh the reaction videos they'll be on everything we'll be on our youtube channel we'll be on twitch we'll also be on mixer our facebook page and we might even now also have it up on periscope so whatever one you follow the most you like to watch we'll be there make sure you give us a follow short pause gaming on all of those feeds we will be live everywhere with our uh, reactions to those uh, press conferences that we can stream all right guys Time to get into the nitty gritty. <laughs> Our E3 predictions now. We are doing what? Five each? Five each. Five each. Uh, do we have the point system figured out yet in case we're going like triples or are we, are we all <laughs> single uh, single picks this year? Anybody got any like real bold ones that are three tier or three level ones that are going for the, like, the big points? I've, uh, I've got a few of those think so. on my list. Um just because my list was was a little tame, so I tried to spice it up uh -huh. a little bit, adding some layers okay. to it. But uh, I'll defer okay. I'll defer yeah. to Judge Bender on this, and uh, and get, <laughs> get his ruling. Okay. <laughs> so Ben's gonna try to guess fifteen <laughs> release dates in one prediction again. Uh, the, none, none of that. <laughs> That's, I that's just me. say, I just say this. I think there should be a risk and reward. Oh, that's right. I'm just gonna say there go should Frankie. be a risk reward. If you want to go for the three point score, that's cool. But if you get one wrong out of the three, you get zero points. You lose. There should point. be a risk reward. You can't. You can't. Well, I mean, if you want to go cray cray, that's cool too. If it screws boys, I'm all for it. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, yeah. Anytime we have a multi point pick, you have to get them all right, or you get no points at all. So there's none of this point two shit that boys always seems to get. What do you mean? That's uh, your of source that, so. of points. I know. That's like my only chance. <laughs> that's your lifeline. That's okay. No, my picks are pretty tame this year. I don't have any multi-point picks. So that's what we'll do for the scoring. <laughs> Who's our reigning champion? Me? Uh, that's, that's me and boys. Oh, that's you. That's right. We, that's we right. tied last boys. year. Did, have I won ever? Have I ever won you a have, year? Have, have you you ever need points. Got a point. <laughs> yeah. You need points to I win. Now, stop, stop. Early <laughs> on in short pause, I scored some points. <laughs> Dude, like, what, did, what did you score a point for? 
Uh, check the tape. It's there. Trust me. Bender gave All him right. a pity point last year, I think. So here's how the, here's how we're going to do this. We each have five picks. There can be no duplicate picks. So I can't say one, and then Frankie can't use that same one with his anywhere in his picks. So it's it depends on how you come out with them because if like say if we're all like okay um we're gonna see last of us two <coughs> you're gonna want to run that one out first before everyone else so you can lock it up so we all get five picks no duplicates bender will be ruling with the points if anybody has a two point or a three point pick where there's three tiers to it you have to get them all right or you don't get any points so it's either three or nothing so I'm really hoping all you guys got two or three point picks because <laughs> that's my plan. I'm going all single pointers. Um, so yeah, that's how we're gonna do it. Five picks each to the true reigning champion, Frankie Ayler. Your first pick, please. And I kind of want to do this one now just because I'm worried you're gonna need to use it. No, <laughs> but, I'm not. But I do, it, it is a two parter. So if you do use the one, I'll just take that off of there. Okay. I'm going to put this one out because I think this one's more possible to be snapped up by Boyster Bender. <laughs> but Square Enix has a conference this year, you know, and I know the obvious things you guys talked about when they announced they're doing this, you know, Kingdom Hearts, Final Fantasy, what have you, uh, Just Cause. But I think uh, Square is going to show that Marvel game that Crystal Dynamics is working on. I completely forgot about that one. I know. I the second I heard I heard you guys wow. missed that, I was like, "Ooh, I gotta get this one out there now." Mm. I would, uh, I would be very <laughs> happy if they showed that game. <laughs> <laughs> very happy. Is that the Avengers game? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, okay. Crystal Dynamics Avengers game. Yeah, I cannot wait to see what that game's going to be. Yeah, I hope you're right on that one. Yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> please, please, Frankie's pick come true. <laughs> that's the one time i want frankie to score a point <laughs> yeah all right up next last year's true runner-up ben holt your next your first pick please oh me oh yes okay. sir <laughs> all right so well we we know nintendo's gonna be focusing on smash brothers but um, my prediction is that they we are going to get a release date it's going to be in september because uh that's mm. when they're re- releasing their online service so mm. I think Smash Brothers is going to be their flagship title for their online service. So they're going to release, uh, announce a, a Smash Brothers release today in September. Mm. Excellent. That's bold. I like that. It does. It, is bold. it makes sense. It makes sense. It does. It does. All right. Last year's true loser, me. <laughs> I will go next. <laughs> um, I'm going to just throw this out here now, just in case Frankie has it. But I'm going to say... um. Uh, Vanquish 2 will be an Xbox One exclusive. Uh, it'll be announced at the Xbox press conference, obviously. So I'm going to go with Vanquish 2, Xbox One exclusive. Uh, Xbox and Sega seem to be very chummy, and we just saw Vanquish make its way backwards compatibility with some X enhancements. So uh, that just seems like that's where we're headed you know, with this. You know who's not chummy, though? Uh, Plat- who's Platinum. That? Platinum not, Games, that's not, true. Not chummy with, with Xbox. So I guess my question is, would this Vanquish 2 be developed by Platinum, or would this be a new developer working on an Xbox exclusive for them in Vanquish 2? I, I would assume it's going to be a new developer. I don't think I don't think Platinum will be anywhere near Xbox. I at first I thought you were talking about Yakuza because that's also <laughs> uh, been a thing, but then uh-huh. I was like, wait a minute, no, everyone else is talking about Van, and that's the one I had on here. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> all right and to the other guy boys you're up next it's my first pick uh it's right here so um oh wow ooh, mm-hmm. rock mm-hmm. rock steady will yeah. unveil their next game and it will uh it will include superman in some respect so either it'll be a superman game or it'll be a justice league game but superman will be an integral part of the next Rocksteady game. It's been uh, it's been several years now. We know that they're working on something. I think it's time for them to show us what they've been working on so we will see what they've been up to with Superman. It's going to happen this E3. Mm. Mm. Interesting. I hope you're right, dude, because I think they'd make a hell of a Superman game. Yeah. All right, Frankie, back to you, buddy. All right. Uh, this one's an EA one. Uh, so we, uh, we're aware that this game exists in some form, but we have no idea what it is or anything about it. So I think that EA will formally announce and show Respawn's Star Wars game. Mm. Mm. 
Okay. Interesting. And by I that, so by that, I mean we'll get you know a gameplay trailer, title, possibly a release date window, but I don't know, maybe not, but definitely a title and gameplay. Now is is response title the one that they're that we're hearing might be a games as a service kind of a title? Is that the is that theirs? Probably. Okay. So that would that would be interesting. Mm. Okay, Mr. Holt. Okay, um, my second one is also a Nintendo one. Uh, they're going to announce a new Animal Crossing game for Switch. I like it. Because, I mean, oh. they, they came out with Pocket Camp a while ago. They they said when they first came out with that game that it was going to, at some point, connect to a core Animal Crossing game, on mm-hmm. like a console game. So I think they'll... You know, finally announce something that's coming out. I don't know if it'll come out this year or not, but that they're def- I think they're going to announce an Animal Crossing game that's coming to Switch. Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll see what happens there. Uh, my next one is uh, a Nintendo one. Nintendo will reveal a new Joy-Con controller with the proper D-pad. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's my next one. <laughs> like I said playing it pretty safe, Mr. Boyce. Um, all right, this is a little bit of a stranger one, but, uh, oh boy. so all four of the, uh, of the PS4 spotlight titles. So that's Spider-Man, The Last of Us 2, Death Stranding, and Ghost of Tsushima. They will all receive gameplay demos during the, the PlayStation press conference. Well, that's mm. bold. Isn't, we've, we've seen gameplay of Spider-Man. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, but I mean, we haven't seen anything from from the other three in terms of gameplay. Is that a four? Is that a four pointer, Ben? That's a three pointer, at it's best. Three pointer. Yeah, I mean, it's it, we don't have to include Spider Man, but there, I am a little bit leery if we're going to see gameplay from from Death Stranding. Uh, I think it's mm-hmm. it's a pretty safe bet that we'll see gameplay from the other two. But I'm throwing Death Stranding in there as well. We've seen Kojima working on the the trailer for it, and it looks like another like cinematic trailer so i don't know if we're gonna i don't know if we're gonna get any gameplay from that one but i'm putting it out there we're gonna see gameplay from all four of these spotlight titles during the conference wow i think ghost right. of Tsushima is a safe bet i want to say like at the very end of that announced trailer there was that part with the horse mm-hmm. i think mm-hmm. that because they usually I've, I've noticed at the end of their trailers they have like a thing that you don't think is gameplay but ends up being a gameplay snippet mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. I, I i i, I cannot wait for that game man <laughs> yeah I, I can't wait to see uh, how they I'm, I'm expecting them to really like spend some time on each of these four titles mm-hmm. how messed up would it be too if if they show gameplay for the other three and they just show a trailer for spider-man because they've already shown gameplay <laughs> <laughs> i actually won't be opposed to that because i don't want them to re- reveal too much more that you can do in that game you know i mean yeah. we've seen some good gameplay so I wouldn't be opposed to that. I'd be actually kind of happy with that. So I, I think for Spider Man, I think that would be the point we're going to see the pro. They're going to unveil that yeah. bundle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that would be a good spot for it. Yeah. Roll down on stage, and here's the Spider Man bundle. <laughs> Just has a picture of Uncle Ben's face on it. It's like, <laughs> Just, oh no! You gotta, <laughs> you gotta like reimpose Bender's Metroid Prime. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we have another moment like that. All right, Frankie, number three. Oh, man. All right. Um, hmm. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go with, um, I don't know whose stage this is going to be on yet. I'm, you know what I mean? Because it's the, I feel like they have good relationships with everyone. But I think Capcom will finally showcase and give us a release window for the Resident Evil 2 remake. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. I like it. I like it. Mr. Holt, number three, please. Okay. This one might be a little too soon, but I'm going to say, I'm going to predict that um, Xbox is going to have an exclusive JRPG announced. Mm. Now, I remember Phil Spencer talking about how he's been trying to, you know, build up relationships with Japanese developers. Um, I, it may be a little too soon for that to bear fruit, but I'm going to just throw that out there and, and hope that they uh, announce some sort of exclusive JRPG at the, on their stage this year. I like that one. That's a good pick. 
Um, my next one, I'm going to go with uh, the Blue Point remaster. Um, they're going to come out and show Demon Souls. That'll be their remaster. That's going to be my pick. I know there's a lot of other ch- options out there. There's a lot of uh, possibilities, but I feel like Demon Souls uh, would be a nice addition. I'm sure Sony knew about the uh, Dark Souls remaster coming, so why not get the Demon Souls out there so you can get the whole, the whole, uh, the whole collection there? So I'm going to go Blue Point Games uh, reveals Demon Souls. Nice. Okay, Mr. Boyce. Um. All right, I am going to go this so uh microsoft will announce a new triple a single player focused first party game uh during their conference uh don't know what it'll be possibly the fable game maybe that that one will rear its head um Mm -hmm. assuming it's a it's a single player game but um i think we've we've heard the chatter and um i just think they're gonna want to roll something out so i'm gonna i'm gonna say they're gonna roll out a, a single player focused first party game I hope so because I think that's something they need to really show to show off. I mean, I mean, there's so many of their their titles have m- multiplayer that are, that takes precedence over the the campaign. I think a a strong single player experience, something they can really bo- you know boast about. I think that's something they could really use at their press conference. Definitely, Franklin number four. Um. Hmm. Man, this year's such slim pickings, you know? Like, there's the super low-hanging fruit to go with. <laughs> like the rest of my list? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I figure you probably have this one on your list. So, um, I'm going to go with uh, Oddworld so- uh, Soulstorm will be shown during the PlayStation conference. We know that they were ahead of schedule because they were at E3 it was last year or the year before, but... I remember uh, Lauren Lanning tweeting out, like, we're just wandering around because we're ahead of schedule, so we're actually getting to enjoy E3, and, um, you know, we know Soulstorm is coming, and, and you know, it's been on, it's been development for a couple of years now, so, you know, PlayStation mentioned there'll be, you know, you know, indies will mm-hmm. have a spot at the show, and I feel like mm-hmm. Oddworld's perfect for uh, that stage. It's a fine pick. Makes sense. Bender. Um. Hmm. At the Square Enix event, they're going to show a teaser for Life is Strange 2. Ooh. But it's not necessarily coming out this year. Okay. I like it. So you're just, just, just to clarify, you're just saying that they will announce Life is Strange 2. Pretty much, yeah. That's, yeah, that's pretty much what I'm saying. Just we'll get some sort of a teaser for it. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to say that uh, my next one is going to be number four is uh, Xbox will tease Halo 6. We will see a teaser for Halo 6. Not a full-on reveal, but a, a, a big teaser of uh, Halo 6 pointing at fall 2019. Yeah, I, uh, I had that on my list too, and I also wrote down fall 2019 for that, which would be a little bit of a break from the pace that they've normally been on with their games. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Typically, they've been two or three years between all of their releases. This will be a a four year window once we get to twenty nineteen. So I think we're going to see Halo Six there as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, boys, uh, let's see here. All right, this is um also a bit of a strange one here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb here and I'm gonna say Crackdown Three, uh, Metroid Prime, and um. Uh, Final Fantasy VII will not make an appearance at E3 this year. Will not be there. Mm. Dude, if Crackdown 3 is not there, they better just cancel that game. <laughs> I just, uh, I, sh- I feel like we're still hearing that that game's in trouble. And do they really want to come out on the stage at E3 and show this game again and not have a release date for it or be not be able to tell us when this thing's coming out? So I, I just, yeah, I, I feel like... I, I don't know. I, I think they might keep it from the show. I, I honestly, if they do that, they have to cancel it by now. Like <laughs> you can't drag this game. It, it's not, it would be different if this was, you know, like the next halo or something like an actual big franchise, but I don't think crackdown has like that, you know, kind of player base. And I mean, everything we've seen in this game, like you've said, has been like these really awkward, 
you know, celebrities playing the game and all these really stupid bugs happening. So I, if they don't bring this game this year with an actual concrete release date after having one last year, there's no way this game's ever coming out. Mm. Mm. Glad you went through it, boys, but we'll talk about <laughs> it in a second. Franklin, <laughs> your fifth and final pick, please. Oh, man, low-hanging fruit or possibly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Just pick that fruit, Frankie. I mean, I I want to, but I also really want this other thing to happen. Mm. Whereas this one is, like, very obviously happening. Like, will it into existence, Franklin? <laughs> all, right. all right. So I'm going to say that, uh, man, I have three more, and I like all three of these. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, Nintendo will show a tra- will show us a trailer uh, for Bayonetta three. Um, probably not any gameplay. I I don't I don't feel so confident in that, but I I think they're gonna aim for a summer 2019 release. Summer 2019. Okay. Yeah, the Bethesda one was a Raid Remaster. Hmm. Mm. Seems that'd plausible. Get, that'd get people excited. That'd be mm-hmm. good, that would get people excited. Good pick. Bender. Um, my final one is uh, more of an outside chance, but uh, I, I had something regarding Death Stranding gameplay, but I'll, since Boyce took that, so I'll take <laughs> use this one. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to say that Nintendo is going to reveal Pikmin 4. Mm-hmm. Just some sort of reveal. They, showing us that it's that it's that, that, that it exists. Bender, they're always working on Pikmin games. Yeah, they're always. <laughs> <laughs> I know the the reason I say it's an outside chance is because I remember I think it was Miyamoto said that you know they kind of pushed it to the like low on the priority list um, or something like that. So I mean, but that that was a while ago. So maybe they'll have something to show. So uh, yeah, Pikmin Four. I mean, they are making a Yoshi game, so. <laughs> true, true. Uh, let's see. I have, like, there's, I'm tossed up between two. One's a PlayStation one, one's an Xbox one. The Xbox one gives me a chance to stick it to Boyce if I'm right. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, I like Could that. Could be the tiebreaker. Could be the tiebreaker. What? Um, <clears throat> I would go Xbox. I'm not confident with the PlayStation one because I feel like that's going to be another PlayStation experience thing. But what what is it? <laughs> I'll never tell. Um, <laughs> I have to. Know. Yeah, I'm going to go for. I'm going to try to stick it to boys. I'm going to say Crackdown Three will be there, and it is coming out this fall. Mm. Fall 2018, right. Crackdown Three will be there, and it will be. It'll it'll get a, a fall 2018 release. Coming out to get buried. <laughs> no, hey, no, nobody will be talking about it. No one's going to talk about it, and it'll be out there. So there you go. It comes out October 26th. <laughs> there you go. Perfect time for it. <laughs> Dude, what if what if Red Dead is the only game that comes out that day? Like, how, how funny would that be? Like in the, in the middle of not the even, fall, not, not even indie yeah, titles trying to get in on that title. rush. It's literally the only game on the release calendar. <laughs> Imagine seeing the PlayStation drop just come out and it's just Red Dead Two, <laughs> nothing else. Not even movies coming out that yeah. day. They're like, ah, oh, we're not even releasing movies this day. Yeah, that'd be hilarious. All right, what was the play- what was the PlayStation one? I have to know. Uh, it was going to be Bloodborne Two announced. And 2019. So, uh, Bender, your fifth and final pick. You mean Boyce? <laughs> so oh, that's right. Boyce is last. Well, if you want to do his too, you can do his too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Boyce, your fifth. The world and will explode. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, all right, I'm I'm gonna go with this one. So, um. In lieu of a uh, of a of like first party surprises at the PlayStation press conference, I believe they're gonna have some third party stuff. And what I'm gonna say is, uh, they're gonna announce or they're gonna show Devil May Cry Five there, and it's gonna be a PS4 exclusive of some kind. Maybe probably a timed exclusive, but it will be a PS4 mm. exclusive of some kind. It'll be announced at the conference. Capcom has obviously shown they're not afraid to put a, a an exclusive out on a platform. Whether it's Dead Rising mm-hmm. or Monster Hunter or uh, even with even Street with Devil May, yeah Street Fighter even with Devil May Cry 
um devil may cry 4 special edition i think it's only available on the ps4 right um mm-hmm. no it's no. on xbox no, okay it's on xbox too so um mm. but uh but yeah i i think that's what we'll see awesome well i'm pretty confident i'll win this year but uh <laughs> that's everyone's picks we have some good ones in there, some nice diversity. Uh, I'll be really excited to see what's going to happen. And uh, again, our E3 plans, we'll have things ironed out and finished uh, and ready to go. We'll let you know on Twitter. It'll also be up on the website, www.shortpause.com. Make sure you stay tuned. Uh, and again, make sure you subscribe to our, our YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, uh, Mixer, or Periscope. Any of those, just search Short Pause Gaming. Make sure you uh, subscribe and make sure you click the button or the bell on YouTube just so you know when we go live with our reactions but we will have a ton of coverage for e3 it's always an exciting time we always have a good time doing it and uh, that's going to do it for this week's show there will be no podcast next week simply because we'll be busy streaming we'll be back the following week with a with a more in-depth look at some of the stories that might have broke out of e3 outside of the press conference or some of the smaller stories that might have got uh, overshadowed by the big ones so uh, we'll have a lot of stuff planned for you guys we can't wait to, to share it with you but gentlemen where can we find you gaming and tweeting franklin Fan man, Xbox Live, PlayStation Network, Nintendo Network, Twitter, pretty much anywhere at Viper Strike. Bender. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Bender underscore guitar. I'm on PlayStation Network and Nintendo Network at me underscore Bender. And Xbox Live at me, Bender82. And this year's E3 predictions loser, boys. <laughs> Uh, as always, Brent, I'll be not tweeting at Piccolo930. It's my PSN ID. It's where you can find me on Xbox and Switch as well. Uh, the Tuesday Night Indie Spotlight, 10 p.m. Eastern on our YouTube channel. Make sure you come on over, check it out. Brent and I will be playing uh, Aragami Nightfall this week. I guess, are we playing Nightfall or are we just playing the regular game? I, I don't know. Uh, we'll do Nightfall. Right, we'll try on Nightfall. Nightfall. I don't know if you have to do something to get into that. I assume you can just play it, but I, I don't know. Um, so yeah, we'll be playing that. So make sure you uh, um, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave comments, come on over, join the chat, all that fun stuff. We uh, love to see you guys there. So we'll look forward to that this week. Yes, sir. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at the dude nineteen seventy nine PlayStation Network, Nintendo Switch, the dude seventy nine Xbox Live, the real dude seventy nine. Make sure you visit the website www.shortpause.com. Follow us on Twitter at the Short Pause. You can listen to this podcast on SoundCloud, iTunes, TuneIn, Google Play, and Stitcher. If you really like this podcast. Send us a uh, go over to iTunes, give us a five star rating, tell us why you love the show. If you're not quite ready to give us a five star rating, that's cool. We don't want any fake ones. Send us an email podcast at shortpause.com. Any criticism, any feedback, any suggestions, we take it to heart. We need to hear from you. It's the only way this show will get better is if we hear from you. So make sure you sound off. If you don't want to send an email, go to the website, go to the podcast post, sound off in the comments there. We want to hear from you. We really appreciate when you do take the time to let us know what you think of the show it allows us to mold the show and make it into a show that you never want to miss every single week you can also watch this podcast on on youtube facebook and twitch all of those short pause gaming for mr boyce mr holt and mr ayler i'm brent felsing thanks again for watching we will talk to you next week as we do the e3 reaction videos we'll see you then good night everybody Bye bye